How do you design one of the most advanced DRs in the country? At Parkview, we did it by focusing all our attention on you, the patient, by involving doctors and nurses in the design process, by creating quieter, more private spaces, and by leading the region in heart, stroke, and trauma care. This is not your typical emergency room, it's Parkview. In an emergency, isn't this where you'd rather be? Parkview, your partner in health. Pro or recreational athlete, our Parkview Sports Medicine team is here to provide you with rapid access to comprehensive care and sports-specific rehabilitation. <clears throat> so, we invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy tonight's game. This is IHS AA Football. Brought to you as a special sports presentation by Parkview Sports Medicine, a winning combination with the IHS AA, and by Fox Sports 1250, The Ticket. Also brought to you by Meyer, proud supporters of youth sports. Mopper Insulation, with over 40 years of quality professional insulation. Walburn Financial Management, providing affordable solutions to bookkeeping and tax problems. By Midwest America Credit Union, all together better. By Signature Style Rings, Enhance the self-esteem of your student-athlete. Jefferson Point, shopping with a special point of view. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Aaron Chiropractic, specializing in spinal health. By Stiefel, a firm of choice. Tom Steel Tire Service, building trust with customers for over 30 years and with special promotional consideration by the Fort Wayne Journal-Gazette. Nobody delivers the goods each morning like the Journal-Gazette. Now let's head to the stadium and join Joe Parson with all the action. Time for the Class 5A sectional to kick off things here in Northeast Indiana and very appropriately, I think, on the eve of Halloween. Hi, everybody. Welcome in to Spooler Stadium. I'm along uh, with Joe Walbert. He joins us this week, and I'm Joe Parson. Our Fox foot focus tonight is on Snyder facing Goshen in a first-ever meeting, at least over the last 30 years. For the Redskins, Joe, this season is all about a series of runs. Goshen won its first four ball games, then lost four in a row. But the Redskins come to Fort Wayne, fueled by a 20 to nothing shutout victory over Wallasee in its regular season finale two weeks ago. And uh, one stat really from that game jumps out from the stat page, and that's Goshen's defense limiting the Warriors to just 64 yards of total offense, and that really speaks volumes. Yeah, that was their best defensive effort for the whole season. And Coach Park likes to think that this group is a physical group that are fighters. They come in, Joe, last year, they didn't win a game. So here they are with five wins already this year in a big matchup tonight with Snyder, but only gave up 64 yards last week and no yards through the air. So Goshen's a team that hangs their hat on defense, only giving up 19 points a game as far as on the offensive side of the ball. They want to be physical. They want to come out with a big offensive line averaging 255 pounds, and I was surprised we were just talking. Their offensive line is big. Pretty big, bigger than Snyder's offensive line. So they've got the size. They like to run Jeff Stahl, who has over 900 yards rushing, seven touchdowns. And they want to run that play-action game with the quarterback, Clayton Dittweiler. So it's going to be important for Goshen to have some success on first down. But they want to play physical, Joe, on offense and be physical on defense, just like they were two weeks ago against Wawasee. Let's take a look at the Snyder Panthers. They also needed to lick their wounds after that 20-17 to loss here to Dwinger three weeks ago. Panthers found the tonic, though, with a 48-6 to route of Southside here on October the 16th. So are the Panthers, Joe Walburn, are they back to playing the type of football that propelled them to that 7-0 and start in their season when they were scoring over 42 points a ball game? That's the big question tonight. Is the hangover gone? That was such a tough loss to Dwanger, and that loss ended with three straight interceptions, and Snyder had dominated so much on the offensive side of the ball, and they were so so disappointed with that loss because they felt like their offense was as good as any offense in this area and not to get it done with Dwanger with the offense has really been tough so the question tonight is is that game behind them it's playoff football time you know they come in with Steaming has over 24 touchdowns passing Joe so he's leading the area in touchdown passes they have so many weapons and David Turner Mac Hippenhammer Malik Branley all over 500 yards are receiving then they have Dominic Scott and Money Woods in the backfield they have combined for 23 
touchdowns. So offensively, so many weapons, maybe the area's best quarterback, but really a game where it's a situational game where is Snyder over the loss to Dwanger? Are they ready for the playoffs? And truly, as you always say, Joe, is it a new season for Snyder? We will find out. It's Goshen against Snyder in a 5A football matchup. Who will get the treat? Who gets the trick? Well, we'll be back after a break, and Kyle Park, the second-year coach of the Goshen Redskins, will join us when we return to Spruler Stadium. This is IHSAA Tournament Football on Fox Sports 1250, The Ticket. The game just isn't the game without you. When pain or injury has you sidelined, call Park New Sports Medicine at 260 266 4007. Whether you're an aspiring pro or a recreational athlete, our team of certified orthopedic surgeons, physical therapists, athletic trainers, and registered dietitian nutritionists will provide you with rapid access to comprehensive care and sport-specific rehabilitation. We can get you back to the action quickly and safely. Just call 260-266-4007. Parkview Sports Medicine, your dream team. Trust the doctors at the IPFW Athletics and the Fort Wayne Comets Trust. Aaron Chiropractic is well known for providing quality, Get cost-effective care for sports injuries, muscle, or joint problems. They're one of the only clinics in the region to provide its patients with pain relief utilizing numerous therapies, including acupuncture, massage, and rehabilitation. Aaron Chiropractic is conveniently located in Northeast Fort Wayne. Find us on the web at AaronChiro.com or call 492-8811 to schedule an appointment. Behind the scenes of the making of a great play area. I'm envisioning something really spectacular. Something over the top. Let's draw up some plans. Yes, JP. Right away, JP. Excellent idea. Oh, move, JP. We'll get right up. I see a large fort with a giant cannon to slide down. Let's make it historic. Tie it in with the history of Fort Wayne. And we gotta have it soft so kids of all ages can play. Let's have those blueprints on my desk by Monday morning. Jefferson Point and Lutheran Children's Hospital ER presents Fort Wayne's largest indoor soft play area. Parents can relax while the kids explore a fort, slide down a cannon, and crawl through the 16-foot cherry blossom tree. Over 2,000 square feet of indoor play area, the largest retail play area in the state of Indiana. Bring the kids and enjoy the fun at Jefferson Point. For details, go to jeffersonshopping.com. There's so much to see. It's where you want to be. Jefferson Point, Jefferson Point. And now, back to the IHS AA Football Game of the Week with Joe Parson on Fox Sports 1250, The Ticket. Just before kickoff, let's uh, check in with head coach Kyle Park in his second year. And uh, coach, uh, a big difference from last year. You know, it was a tough first year for you, no wins. And, you know, regardless how things turn out tonight, five wins this season. And a team that's really come along. You started out great four straight wins and then a tough stretch of games. We're coming off that 20 to nothing win. Two weeks ago over Wallace See, One thing that jumped off the stat page, you hold the deep defensively, you hold them to 64 yards, I think, uh, total yardage. That speaks well about your defense. Yeah, they're, you know, they're playing well at the right time of the year. Uh, they they had, to, had to play extremely disciplined football against an offense like Wallace Seas, and, and they did that. Held them to zero passing yards and 64 yards uh, rushing. It was a good, solid defensive effort, and the offense controlled the ball uh, like we need to against those types of offense. I want to ask you, I, I know you still got a bunch of youth uh, on this team. What has made the difference in a year uh, with your program? Our leadership, the senior leadership, uh, was something that we spent some time um, um, working on this summer. And uh, the seniors have really gravitated towards and embracing their role. And they did a nice job bringing the team with them. Let's talk a little bit about your quarterback, Deadweiler. He's done a nice job for you this year. But give me a little profile of what's made your team successful this year offensively. Well, offensively, we've been pretty balanced. Um, you know, we've got a, a most well, 1,400 yards throwing the ball, and, and I don't know. I know we're over 1,000 yards rushing the football, but uh, we've been fairly balanced in all of our, our ball games. Um, we've taken care of the ball in our wins, and we've turned the ball over a little bit too many times in our losses. So, um, you know, when we're clicking, um, we're, we're, we're pretty balanced. We're pretty good. Talk about the matchup tonight against Snyder. What do you see on film and some of the things, points of emphasis for a Goshen win? Uh, the biggest thing that sticks out on film is Snyder doesn't make a lot of mistakes. They don't, they don't turn the ball over very much. They don't, they don't beat themselves with penalties. Um, the, obviously, they're, they're pretty good sized up front. They've got a lot of athletes in the secondary. So uh, we're going to have to take care of the football. We're going to have to tackle well in space and play with a lot of enthusiasm and, uh, and uh, have a little fun out there tonight. Nick 
special anthem presented here this evening by the Snyder uh, Panther Marching Band. As far as Kyle Park in his second year as head coach of the Goshen Redskins, they come in with a 5-4 and four record. They finished 3-4 and four in the Northern Lakes Conference, tied for fifth place, ironically, with Warsaw. We saw the uh, Tigers last week in their uh, game and loss against the Carroll Chargers. As far as last year, a nightmare. They were 0-10 for the year they lost in the sectional, 47-9 at uh, in their... Uh, uh, first uh, sectional uh, ball game. On the road, they're 2-2, two and two, though, and a team that comes in with a win. Their uh, 20 to nothing shutout victory was their first of the season. We will take a two-minute timeout. We'll be back. It'll be Kurt Tippman to join us talking about the Panthers now 8-1 and one after the bounce-back win two weeks ago against Southside. This is IHSWA Tournament Football on Fox Sports, 1250 The Ticket. McDonald's presents Choices. Jeff, would you rather have real breakfast like an Egg McMuffin or burnt toast? Egg McMuffin. And would you rather play sick guitar solos or be fluent in four languages? <laughs> nice choices, Jeff. Get to McDonald's and choose a real breakfast. Keep it real with an Egg McMuffin or Sausage McMuffin with Egg Sandwich. Now part of the all-day breakfast menu. Mix and match any two for just $3.50 at McDonald's. Limited time only. Prices and participation may vary. Press the single item on menu. Hi, I'm Charlie Momper from Momper Insulation. We've been around since 1956 and we're still the number one name in insulation. Chances are you've seen us re-insulate in the home in your neighborhood where we blow insulation into the side walls and attic to make your heating and cooling more efficient. Give us a call and let's talk about all the insulation options we have available to help you save money. I know we can do the job. You've got my word on it. Call us at 432-7543. Satisfied with your bank? Have you considered a credit union? Midwest America offers about any service you need. The convenience of free mobile banking, debit cards, ATMs, free online banking and bill payer, competitive loans, mortgages, and more. Deposits insured to a half million dollars. Hey, consider this an invitation. Your next bank should be a credit union. Midwest America Federal Credit Union. Midwest America Federal Credit Union. The market goes up, the market goes down. And if you're a typical investor, you may be playing games, trying to guess correctly. When to buy, when to sell. Oh, that can be expensive and exhausting. Well, what if there was a local company with tons of investment experience to help you take some of the guesswork and worry out of investing? The name is Steeple, specializing in individual portfolio management. Steeple can help reduce the risk and worry of investing, building you a portfolio of quality, performing stocks and bonds. Give Steeple a call at 260-459-3989. Let's get back to the stadium with more IHS AA football action and Joe Parson on Fox Sports 1250, The Ticket. We are back and joined by head coach Kurt Tepman of the Snyder Panthers. Uh, also enjoying a bye week? Maybe yes, maybe no. Coming off a win two weeks ago against Southside, a comeback win in the sense that bouncing back after that tough loss against Winger. I want to ask you first of all though, coach, uh, the week off, does that help to get you healthy a little bit or would you just as soon play last week? Well, we're not really banged up. Um, so we used the, the week, the extra week, really just to get better at everything. And, as a coaching staff, we're pretty happy with the effort the kids gave, their concentration, and you know, not having a game looming ahead in that week. They really got a lot accomplished, and we had two, we've had two really good weeks of going against each other and just getting better. And uh, we're excited to see you know, where that measures on a, on a game and against the opponent. You know, I'm sure one of the goals, especially with the season you were putting together, I think you were 7-0 and at the one point before the loss to Dwinger. And, and you like to have had an undefeated season, maybe go all the way to the state title. But I'm wondering, is there a little bit of a benefit, maybe a, 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 a slight cloud in the fact that after that win, the monkey, if you will, is off your back. Uh, you don't have to worry about every week people gunning for an undefeated team. Does that help a little bit? Well, you know, I don't know. Um, it's hard to get into the minds of the kids. Are they worried about making mistakes? Or, you know, do they feel pressure about winning? Um, so, you know, I can't really have a good answer for that. But we will, I know they're very disappointed in the loss. And, uh, but we're proud of the fact that they translated that into some good effort in the weeks you know, after that in, in working on all the things we, need, we know we need to get better at. Coach, we all should have taken more psychology when you look back at it. That's right. Let, let's talk about Goshen tonight, and they're coming off a win two weeks ago against Wallace. And talking to Coach Park, I mean, they limited the, the Warriors to 64 yards defensively and, and no passing yards. I'm sure that caught your eye. Sure, certainly. They have a very stout defense, and 
you know, they play hard. They're well coached and they just fly around and they play hard. And that's what you, you know, that's a big ingredient to, to being a successful team. Um, so, you know, just like what we expect in the playoffs, you know, a good opponent and certainly we have to play our best to be successful. As far as Goshen, uh, talk about some of the points of emphasis from a Snyder standpoint, what do you feel you got to do to win? Uh, we have to worry about what we do, you know, not as much concerned about doing things and combating things that Goshen does. We have to worry about ourselves. We have to execute things. Uh, we have to be assignment conscious on defense and just do the things that we're coached to do to be successful. Head coach uh, Kurt Tipman in his seventh year. Uh, before kickoff joining us, uh, the Panthers come in at 8-1. and one. They finished uh, in the AP and uh, coaches poll, ranked number five in Class 5A. They are 4-1 and one here at Spooler Stadium. A year ago, the Panthers were 10-3. and three. They finished 6-1 and one in the SAC. They won a sectional. They won a regional title. And then they lost uh, here in the semi-state to Laporte at 35-7. to seven. Goshen against Snyder here in this 5A sectional kickoff game. Uh, a week later than most of the other uh, teams. But uh, we'll find out who gets the trick and who gets the treat as we'll be back with the kickoff and we'll uh, join our referee Chad Gibson down below and our own Joe Walburn down there for the reenactment of the coin toss coming up in two minutes. We'll be back. This is IHSAA Tournament Football on Fox Sports 1250, the ticket. You've heard the saying, it's all about the Benjamins. Nothing could be more true at Tom Steele Tire, where it's all about saving you money. For over 35 years, this family-owned business has been saving Fort Wayne drivers lots of Benjamins. Offering quality tires and ASC certified mechanical service for your car, and that includes an oil change and tire rotation special, all for just $24.95. Two convenient locations in Fort Wayne to serve you. Tom Steele Tire, not just a tire store, but a complete automotive center. Next time you're downtown and needing to feed your sweet tooth, you're just a few steps away from Rudy's. Fort Wayne's perfect location for stocking up on those famous to brand gourmet chocolates the Summit City is famous for. Rudy's is located just catty corner from the main entrance to Parkview Field. In fact, Rudy's is a great place to meet up with friends before an event at the ballpark. There's even outside patio seating, ideal for relaxing after work. With a wide assortment of adult beverages and aromas to choose from as well, Rudy's, distinctly different in downtown Fort Wayne. So, that's the word you expect to hear when selling a home. And Rick Whitman from Century 21 Bradley can give you and your family the advice, expertise, and satisfaction to fit your needs when buying or selling a home. With Rick Whitman's nearly 40 years of can-do experience, you'll find an effective method to accomplish your goal, select the proper loan, and feel the comfort of your new home. When you think real estate, think Rick Whitman at Century 21 Bradley. Call 260-704-6565. Be sure to ask for Rick. Every small business person has the same dread. Taxes, reports, and bookkeeping. What are you to do? You know you can't afford the big guys to keep you legal and solvent? Well, now there's Wallburn Financial Management to save the day. Here's their number. You're going to want to remember this one. 260-459-2240. That's 459-2240. Why? Well, Wallburn Financial Management specializes in the little guys. With reasonable rates and sensible retainers, Wallburn Financial Management is simply perfect for the small business budget. And now back to the IHS AA football game of the week with Joe Parson on Fox Sports 1250, the ticket. Goshen against Snyder here at Spooler Stadium. Welcome back, everybody. We're joined by Joe Walburn. He's down uh, at uh, midfield getting ready for the meeting of the co-captains. Snyder's out there already waiting for Goshen to come out from the locker room. Let's bring you up to date on a couple of other games going on elsewhere. Of course, in the uh, big 6A sectional three matchup tonight, it's... Uh, it's both the seven and two team, seven and three teams. Carroll playing at Homestead in the rematch from earlier in the season. In four uh, A sectional twenty, it's Southside playing at Leo New Haven against Dwinger. One of those games started at seven o'clock. With the teams coming in from uh, Goshen and Concord, those games were delayed a kickoff till seven thirty. But Dwinger has the early six nothing lead over New Haven in uh, that ball game. As far as 3A sectional 27, Concordia plays at Belmont down in Decatur, lures home against Yorktown. 2A sectional 35, it's Cherubusco at Whitco. And number 10 ranked Woodland. Uh, they've got a ball game here tonight as they take on East Side. The Warriors, by the way, ranked number 10, and they are also uh, ranked number 10 among all teams defensively and giving up only about 10 points a ball game. And our final game to take a look at in 1A, sectional 44, Southern Wells 
at uh, taking on Adam Central at 9 and 1. As we wait for the uh, co captain still to come out here with the meeting, the reenactment of the coin toss. Looking at some of the numbers, scoring offense, Goshen comes in averaging just under 20 points a ball game. They scored 22 weeks ago in the victory over Wawasi, 20 to nothing. Snyder's averaging 46.7, then ranks them number 12 among all IHSAA teams. Let's go down, and uh, we'll pick up the... Okay, uh, no, no, guys, don't rotate yet. Come on in. I'm sorry. All right. Okay, uh, gentlemen, we know uh, predetermined Snyder won the toss. And you like to defer your options in the second half, and you're going to kick to the board. Is that correct, Snyder? Yes, sir. Okay, let's go ahead and rotate. Snyder, you face the board. Goshen. There you have it, Joe. Snyder wins the toss. They're going to defer and kick to the second half. So we'll see that Snyder defensive line against that big Goshen offensive line, the first possession. As far as field conditions, Joe, this field's in great shape. Probably the best I've ever seen this stadium at this point in the season. As far as weather, it's nice and cool. Feels like football weather, but it's comfortable, Joe. I think it's going to be a fast track, and it's a great night for football and playoff football for Snyder to start that march down to Indianapolis. We'll see if Joe Auburn back up top. We'll take a quick 30-second timeout. This is IHSAA football on Fox Sports 1250, the ticket. You're a super fan who will tailgate anywhere. The pros, check. College, check. Your eight-year-old peewee game, big time. And to prepare for this ritual, you head to fire for freshly prepared food and licensed team apparel. Proudly display allegiance to your favorite team with our licensed short and long tees, hoodies, hats, and jerseys. Plus, load up on fresh meats, snacks, and drinks. So don't just tailgate, tail greater at Meyer. Brought to you by Meyer. Meyer is proud to support IHSAA football. Let's get back to the stadium with more IHS AA football action and Joe Parson on Fox Sports 1250, the ticket. Joined us just in time as we're ready for the open kickoff here at Spooler Stadium. Snyder getting ready to take on the Goshen Renskins. And the kickoff, Snyder kicks away from left to right out of the south end zone. Brady Bechtel is back deep in kick return. Let's see if Vermel Johnson is back there as well. And we're just about ready to get this one underway. Made good time up there from the field. Absolutely. Finally getting a little bit of shape this season, huh? <laughs> Here we go. Here comes the line drive kick down the middle. Net gets behind Johnson. Chases it down at the two. Comes right side and uh, tripped up and dropped right at the 10-yard line. So that is where the Goshen Redskins and all. Well, I tell you what, that kickoff. A lot of leg into it. In it. Uh, Johnson's not all that big, Joe, but uh, got over his outstretched hands. He only goes about uh, five, well, they list him at six foot, but uh, nearly a disaster. It'll be first and 10 at the Redskins start back at their own 10-yard line. Yeah, great kick for Snyder and good special teams play of the guys to hustle down and make that tackle. Take a look at Clayton Dentweiler at quarterback. He's thrown for over 1,400 yards, eight touchdowns, 10 picks. Dylan Black back as one of the running backs, but Jeff Stoll's been doing a lot of the uh, the running uh, so far this season. We'll check his numbers, but Deadline rolls to his right side, looks to throw on the run. He's got a catch up around the 15-yard around the line, driven back. But uh, it'll be a pickup of about five or six yards, and I would expect we're going to see a lot of those possession type of passes tonight. Yeah, that's what Goshen has to do to be successful because they can't play behind the chains with Snyder. They have to have some positive plays on first and second down and almost manage these chains because if Goshen gets in third and long against the Snyder defensive line, they're going to be in trouble. Denweiler out of the shotgun formation. Two protectors, one either side. Second down in five. Out of the gun. Read option. Hands it off. And uh, no, he kept it himself. Slides down across the 15 to the 16-yard line. So he got about a yard and a half. Carried three times for three yards. Scored a rushing touchdown last week in that 20 to nothing win. And the first critical third down call of the ball game coming up. We're a minute into the ball game. It'll be third down and three for Goshen moving from right to left. And that was good recognition for Snyder by the outside linebacker, Janari Brown, 6'1", 195, comes up and makes the tackle. But you're right, Joe, all of a sudden, a big third down for Goshen. They need this because you don't want to punt the ball after this because Snyder will get great field position. Colton Potter leads them with catches, 37 on the year. Here's an option run to the left side. Detweiler throwing on the run. He's got a catch that is close to the first down spot at the 20. They're going to mark it short, though, Joe, at the 19. It'll be fourth down in a yard, I believe. Yeah, the coaches up here didn't like that because they wanted 
forward progress across the 20. It was kind of a lousy spot for Goshen, and it brings up fourth and what, maybe half a yard? And I, you have to punt the ball here, Joe, because if you don't get it, you're in big trouble. It's tempting. I mean, I mean, no part thought about it. <laughs> you got to punt that ball away, but how about the Panther defense? Nice job again by Janari Brown to come up and make that tackle and prevent that first down. So we will see. Let's see who they've got punting. They've had a committee this year from the 10 or from the 5. Here's the punt. Uh, angled punt far side. Hippenhammer will let that one bounce. It'll bounce to midfield and about three yards deep into Snyder territory. But very, very good field position for the Snyder Panthers. So they force Goshen go three and out on their first set. And now we'll see about that Panther offense. And I think that Panther offense is ready to explode. You know, I know they had the game with South after the tough loss with Dwayne to try to get themselves right, but South couldn't put up much of a fight. I think tonight is the game for Snyder that really has the opportunity to kick this thing in motion and get going with these playoffs, Joe. And I think I think Steaming is just chomping at the bit to have a big game. They'll open up with the uh, empty backfield. So three, five wide, three to the right side. And here's Stiebling winning the throw. Quick slant. He's got a catch far side. That was Malik Bramley on the catch uh, two weeks ago. Had one for 19 yards. It was good for a touchdown. And they moved the chains. Right for first snap, it'll be first and 10 into Goshen Territory at the 41. Very efficient. Now you see the no huddle offense. Snyder wants to snap this ball quickly. This time out of the pistol lineman goes Stiebling. A little hard count trying to draw Goshen off. Now backs away and checks the Snyder sidelines. How they want to run the play call. Opening a series offensively for the Panthers. We have no score. Their first, here's a give angled run to the right side. Let's see if that's Dominic Scott. It was as he brings it inside the Goshen 40 down to about the 38-yard line. That'll be a pickup of about three. And there's just so many weapons for Snyder. And it's interesting because Goshen's playing basically a 4-4, Joe. So they're taking the approach. They want to stop the run. And they're going to play man-to-man -man on the outsides, Joe. So if I'm, if I'm Isaac Stevie, I'm just licking my lips looking for those long passes. You know, you look at Money Wood, you look at Dominic Sock. And by the way, here's a run up the middle. And uh, they are having a first down inside the 30 to the 29. But I want to talk a bit about Money Woods and the combination with Dominic Scott, Scott doing the the running, they have combined together over 1,100 rushing yards and 23 rushing touchdowns, so it's by committee, but that two with Dominic Scott in there right now, and we'll see Money Woods shortly, I'm sure. They've done the job, certainly, for the Snyder Panthers. First and 10 again. Short drop. Here's Stiebling looking. A lot of time. Throws over the middle. That's a high ball that's caught and a run by Malik Bramley down the right sidelines. Inside the 20. Hurdles one defender. He's close to the goal line. Stopped at the one. Excellent route by Bramley. Bramley runs across the middle, makes himself available, and Steeling hits him right in stride. And then Bramley picks up 20 more yards after the catch, breaking tackles. But that's why it's so difficult to defend Snyder. You know, we just talked about Dominic Scott and Money Woods averaging seven yards a carry. That time, Steebling comes off to his third option and hits him in stride and a huge play for Snyder. DeAndre Stroud comes in now. They go into nine formation. Stroud is the up back and Scott is the tail back and cut, takes it left side and, and waltzes into the end zone. They've not indicated that the knee hit. That's in. That's a touchdown, and that was impressive, wasn't it, Joe? Never saw an official raise his hands for the touchdown, but it is 6-0. That'll be a one-yard touchdown run by Dominic Scott, and that is his uh, 14th rushing touchdown of the year. Yeah, and that's the thing. You know, Snyder gets great field position and makes Goshen pay. Now it's going to put the pressure on Goshen Joe to come back and answer that touchdown. And this is where Snyder's so dangerous is when they get ahead and they turn the game into a track meet with their touchdowns. Paul Boozman's 53 of 57 on conversions this year, waiting for the right. There was motion uh, across the line of scrimmage right side. And I believe the whistles blew that down, and it is going to be encroachment against Goshen. That would be a walk-off of half the distance. And to finish up with, with Snyder, Joe, you have so many weapons. You have, you know, you mentioned Woods and Scott. They average seven yards per carry. You've got three receivers over 500 yards. You have got to play your assignment on defense versus Snyder. 
So Scott with a rushing touchdown. Now Boozman trying to make it a 7 0 Snyder lead, waiting for the snap. Merriweather, the holder, right footed kick is on the way, looks good, and is good. 7 0 in favor of Snyder with a timeout here at Spooler Stadium. Good start for Snyder here at home in this 5A sectional matchup. This is IHSAA Tournament Football on Fox Sports, 1250 the ticket. Where do savvy sports fans in the Summit City go when they need to know more than just the score? It's an easy choice. No other media outlet covers the local sports scene like the Journal Gazette. You get seven days sideline coverage from the area's most experienced and knowledgeable sports staff. It's a commitment to Fort Wayne that the Journal Gazette takes very seriously. When you need to know the story behind the story, nobody delivers the goods each morning like the Journal Gazette. And even when you're on the go, you can still catch up on the latest sports news online at www.journalgazette.net or from your mobile device at www www.jgmobile.net. Start your sports day right, every day, seven days a week with the Journal Gazette. And now back to the IHS AA football game of the week with Joe Parson on Fox Sports 1250, the ticket. 7-0 Panthers in the early going here. They'll kick away just the way we started this ball game. Snyder won the toss deferred. They'll kick from right to left. And Ramil Johnson back there in kickoff. Uh, position once again. Waiting for the go-ahead. Officials have not yet marked the ball ready for play. Now they do as Trent Morgan ready to approach. Right-footed kick, high, end over end, right down the middle. Johnson's got it at the 11. Works to the middle of the field, 15, 20, 25. Leaps over, wow, I told, that was a high jump. Across the 35, up to about the 39. And that young man has got some ups. Ramil Johnson, he hurdled tour players, I think. <laughs> and I was always talking you're not supposed to jump. You know, you're not supposed to jump in games like that, Joe, but Ramil jumped over a couple of guys. I thought he was going to keep going on that. You don't see that very often. I've, you've seen it a couple of times in the college and professional level. You don't see that in the high school level. That was like the long jump that he could have. That might have been a world record. First and ten, very good field position now for the uh, Goshen Redskins. They're on the short end, though, of a 7-0 score. I believe Dylan Back is in there as the running back. Roll the right side, Detwater looking, looking, looking. Now throws the ball away. Nothing and no options open. He was looking in the area of Corbin Harrison, who has 36 catches on the year for 431 yards and three touchdowns, but couldn't find him. And it'll bring up second down and ten with the ball at the Redskin 38. And it's interesting how much Goshen's throwing the football early on. We thought we'd see more Jeff Stahl come in almost five yards per carry, Joe. I thought they'd try to be a little more physical with their big offensive line and try to run the football. But early on, all we've seen is Goshen try to throw the ball. Potter wide right. Uh, they come up, and there was movement at the line of scrimmage defensively in the middle. Zach McDowell came across. And which way, though? Encroachment? Or is it procedure? And they're walking off against Goshen, so the Redskins flinched and McDowell the 270 pound defensive sophomore tackle reacted and that'll move the ball back to the Redskin 34 yard line. Quickly a couple of scores in the second quarter Carroll 7 Homestead 7. Second quarter Belmont 14 Concordia nothing and Leo 19 Southside nothing. Detweiler high snap got it hands the ball off they try to run back up the middle and uh, not much there gets back maybe to the line of scrimmage plus about a yard maybe Short of the 35s where they'll spot the ball. Knows the football just inside the Redskin 35. It'll bring up third down and 14. And this is danger time. Third and long. Watch out if you're Goshen. This is where you have to be so careful not to turn the football over because you love the Snyder defensive line, Joe. And that defensive line is going to pin their ears back now. And they're going to come hard. They've got to get out to their own 49-yard line on this snap. Snyder drops... Three back in cover, actually two safeties back now. Two wide to the right side, one wide to the left. Option run, they'll run the ball, and there's running room, and they are short of the first down at their own 47-yard line. Trying to cut back to his right was Dylan Back, and he lost his footing right about, if he had another yard, he would have had the first down, but they mark it just inside the 47. It's fourth down and two. And it puts his coach, Park, in such a difficult decision here. What do you do here? You're scared to death to give the ball back to Snyder because if Snyder hangs another one on you, you're going to get run out of the stadium. If you go and get it, you can maintain your drive. I think it's playoff football. I think you need to roll the dice here. 
Potter wide to the right. That's the short side of the field. Harrison to the left part of a trips package. Deadwire rolls that way, throws. It's got a catch. That'll give them a first down. Their first of the ball game. The ball popped free, and Snyder's got it. Are they going to rule it down on contact at the 49? Yeah, Goshen's forced. They're going to rule that ball down, Joe. So the Redskins will continue to possess the football. They have it first and 10 at the Snyder 49-yard line. That was Cameron on the catch that time, Joe, but nice execution for Goshen. Big pressure-filled play, Joe. He rolled the quarterback to the left in a nice catchable ball, and Snyder blew the coverage that time. Cameron Klein, by the way, is the backup quarterback, but Clayton Dentwell is the starting quarterback, and he is a 6'1", junior, 160-pounder, hands the ball off again, and boy, a wall <laughs> run into that time by back as he gets back to the line of scrimmage and gets maybe a yard. And uh, Dylan Back goes, well, just 5'7", 170 pounds. He's a junior. And it'll be, let's call it no gain, second down from the 49 of uh, Snyder. And how about Drew Briceford that time just filling the hole, helmet to helmet, and drops the back for Goshen. Big time hit. Brelsford leads them with tackles coming Physical in. He also job. has two sacks, five tackles for loss, and one interception. Blitz coming, defensive left side, play action. Here's Dettenweiner being pursued, rolls to his right, tries to screen the ball, and has got to catch Ubaldo. And the tight end, they split him out, and he's got another first down inside the Snyder 40 to about the 38, maybe close to the 37. Nice drive for Goshen, and I like the play action fakes that Detweiler has, Joe. We heard he was very good with his play action. That time, he froze the Snyder defensive end, and if he can get outside contain and get out there and be able to be a run pass option, it opens up those passing lanes. So excellent play action for Detweiler and a good looking drive for Goshen. Yeah, it buys them some time too against that rush of the Panthers. From the right side hash mark, they looked it back again and he uh, initially had some running room inside the 35 and then took a big hit again about the 34. He'll pick up about four, maybe five yards. So whether we gonna spot the ball back right at the Panther 34-yard line. We uh, approach five minutes, time remaining in this fast-moving first quarter. It's 7-0 in favor of the Snyder Panthers, but Goshen's starting to put things together. Yeah, Goshen, their big offensive line starting to get lathered up. They're starting to get into the Snyder defensive front, and if they can run the football and be a threat running that football, it's going to make it much easier for Detweiler to find his receivers down the field. Johnson and Ponder wide to the right side, but Detweiler rolls to his left, looking, looking, throws to the fade, and boy, there was contact and no penalty flag as it was uh, Janari Brown that got caught up with one of the, uh, the intended receivers down there, left side. That was no flag and no uh, penalty. Looked like there was um, some contact out there. You could have possibly called thrown the flag, Joe, but I don't know if that ball was catchable. I mean, that ball was out of bounds, so, but you know, Goshen wanted that penalty, and that's a big, big break for Snyder, so now it brings up a third and six, and this is probably four down territory, so I expect Goshen to roll that quarterback out again, Joe, and try to work the flat. You know, Joe, uh, one thing, Janari Brown was looking back for the ball, so he was True. not playing the, uh, the, the receiver. That was Bechtel, the intended receiver. Now they've got two protectors again. It's third down and seven and uh, here's Dentweiler being pursued screens the ball and throw it away nobody home and the pressure was on and Dentweiler was decked on the play as Snyder had the blitz coming up the middle yeah and that time Snyder brought D'Angelo Stroud looked like he almost came from that corner position Joe but what it did was it took away Dentweiler's ability to break contain to get outside to throw the football boom plays dead so excellent defense for Snyder and now a big play here huge fourth down early on in this game incompleted pass stops the clock 427 remaining first quarter three wide to the left one wide to the short side to the right dead while out of the gun snip is made and he th looks quick slant is made and fallen down right at the spot that was Corbin Harrison so the fourth down Bid fails for the Goshen Redskins, and Snyder will, has hauled, held on downs. They'll take over at their own 34-yard line. Excellent chase by the defensive lineman, Lawrence Johnson. You know, Lawrence Johnson's a big kid, Joe. He goes 6'2", 250, but he's only a sophomore. They say, Joe, the coaches tell me, Joe, he hasn't even developed <laughs> a man body yet. 
and he's 6'2", 250. He's a monster, and he's filled with baby fat. When they get that baby fat off him, look out. But he makes the play that time. Big stop for Snyder. Here's Stiebling, low snap, and he hands the ball off. Here's Money Woods, back pedals across the line of scrimmage, across the 40. He carries out close to a first down. He's very close to the 44-yard line. And I uh, believe they're going to move the chains, Joe Auburn. Yeah, he's so shifty, and he's so good in that spread offense. I'm talking about Money Woods. And it always hurts me to come out here and watch him wear the black and yellow because I played with his daddy over at Southside. But an explosive player, seven yards a carry and ten touchdowns in the season, and a player who can really do some damage on the next level. Comes in with 490 rushing yards. He's adds ten on that last carry, so he's at 500 yards for the year. Oh, he's... Well, they still show second down over there, but it's first down and 10. Now the officials change that. So improving field position. Woods again tests the left side, trying to turn the corner and does. He's to midfield. He's to the 45, dragging tacklers down close to the 41-yard line, maybe the 40 of Goshen. I love his pad level, and I love it when you show me a back who plants the outside leg, drops the pads, and gets up field. And that's the decisiveness of the running ability of Money Woods, and he compliments Dominique Scott and the rest of these weapons so well. Then when they put the big fullback in the game, too, look out, too, Joe. Two carries, two first downs, 20 yards. Stiebling wanting to throw, looks over the middle. He's got a wide-open sliding catch. That was Bramley again. He's been the featured receiver. He's down to the 25. He had to go down to cradle that ball and uh, stop right there. Yeah, and Bramley is so talented. A lot of people give a lot of the press to Hippenhammer on the outside, but Malik Bramley is so talented, and he's so smooth the way he can run his routes. Bramley with 516 yards coming in. He has set up the first touchdown of the ball game at the one. Now they want to have a counter run. And here is a run right side, and there is Bramley, and he uh, brings it down to the 22-yard line, maybe the 21-yard line. A little different look that time. Yeah, it was a different look. And one more score to update, Joe. Um, almost halftime, Bishop Dwanger 13, New Haven nothing. So, so far, Dwanger's rolling, Belmont's rolling, Carroll and Homestead out southwest is a dogfight. No score with Lures in the Lures game, so good matchups across the area. That last play good for four yards, second and six. They look the woods again, off tackle, gets by a one, cuts to the 15, to the 10, and a foot race inside the five, and he breaks a tackle and scores. 21-yard run. They won't catch him today. Money Woods to the house and a 13-0 lead. To the house it is. And on the way to the house, you run over the last tackler, so what a run by Money Woods. You say, geez, he's only 5'8", 170. I just saw him truck a 200-pound kid out there, so speed decisiveness, pad level, and the ability to run downhill. And we've talked so much about Snyder throwing the football. That was old school Snyder, Rod Woodson, Courtney Davis right there with Money Woods. Yeah, smash mouth football and power football it is as Woods gets the score. Scott had the first score of the ball game. Now Boozman tries to make it 14-0. Booms it end over end, and it is good. 14-0 Panthers with a timeout here at Spooler Stadium. And this is IHSW Tournament Football on Fox Sports 1250, the ticket. Every day, Fast Science helps businesses like yours with their visual communication. We ask the right questions, recommend smart solutions, and help you build your business. Our knowledgeable consultants uncover your communication challenges and provide visible solutions. At Fast Signs, we're innovators, planners, and designers. We're more than fast, more than signs, and we're more than ready to help. Contact Fast Signs today. Text the word Fast Signs to 90407 to receive sales and discounts. Let's get back to the stadium with more IHS AA football action and Joe Parson on Fox Sports 1250, The Ticket. Two rushing touchdowns for the Panthers. They lead visiting Goshen 14-0. want to remind everybody, coming up at halftime, we have a special visit with Katrina Newman, who is the marketing manager at Jefferson Point. And uh, she'll be joining us talking about 60 days of holiday activities and entertainment coming up at Jefferson Point. It all begins tomorrow with some trick-or-treating. You're going to take your young son out there? Absolutely. be a lot of fun. I went to the zoo today with my young son and loved the trick-or-treating they had over at the zoo. But I know they have a great deal over at Jefferson Point with the trick-or-treating too. Johnson runs up to the 11, has it again, and works to his right side, has a bit of a hole, and he bounces off a tackle across the 30 and up to about the 32. 
And it'll be first and ten for the Goshen uh, Redskin. By the way, that interview uh, coming up at halftime, and it all starts with uh, the trick-or-treater for the kids at uh, Jefferson Point from 5 to 7 tomorrow, but 60 days of activities. And, Joe, they've already got the tree up out there. Jefferson Point it is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's amazing what they do with the tree and all the traditions that they're creating over there. Think of all the kids that get their picture taken in front of that tree. So that's an awesome thing they do. And really, they've become an anchor in the city out there on the southwest side. Demarius Ridley checks in now at one of the cornerback positions near side. As the, it's Deadweiler takes a look at that Snyder defense. They dropped the safeties back now, and uh, also they've got six back in coverage in the uh, dime defense. Here's a throw to the right. Good coverage, but a catch that's made, I believe, up across the 40-yard line. Or no, they're going to rule it. No catch. And it'll be second down and 10. And this is why it's so difficult to play Snyder. You have to forget that you're down 14 nothing on the scoreboard. You want to get back out there. They had success in the last drive running the football. Now they feel like they're down a couple of touchdowns. they got to really get moving. they got to start throwing the football, and that's when it becomes so difficult against Snyder. Colton Potter was the intended receiver. He comes back in wide to the right side. They'll come up and uh, press coverage on him. Here's Deadweiler out of the gun, looking to hand the ball off. A play that's designed to go right, and boy, nothing there as the everything collapses. And I'll tell you what, Janari Brown finished it off, but he had a lot of help in the middle of the field. Yeah, Janari Brown is a stud, and he is almost unblockable in these high school games. And the way he can get off blocks, but also have the size to just power through blocks, that's an issue, and that's going to be an issue for Goshen. You're going to have to chip with the tight end or get a second body on him and get him blocked. But, again, third and long, Joe, and it's so tough to play behind the chains in high school football. And Marcus Green was there as well. He leads them. He had two tackles, two sacks two weeks ago against Southside. Let's come in defensive left side. Deadweiler, quick throw on the slant's got a catch. They're short of the first down, though, at their 42-yard line. They may spot that ball. They're going to mark it right at the 42, and here we go. It's Ben Goshen looking at uh, these third down and fourth down calls, short yardage calls. It's fourth down and, uh, well, a long two. I think he's going to gamble again. I mean, he's one for one so far at these gambles. That was a good play, Joe, with the slant. Well done by Detweiler but an even better job done out there by the Snyder defensive back, Taj Starks, to make that tackle. So sets up a big fourth down here. This is a must-get for Goshen. Deadwell out of the gun. Will he throw? One-handed catch on the snap. Looks left side. There's the ball intercepted. And it's returned by Brelsford inside the 20 to the 15 to the 10. And he's down to the five-yard line. A one-handed interception that time by Drew Brelsford. That's his second pick of the year in Snyder. In business again with under a minute remaining in the first quarter, trying to add to their 14-0 lead. And it's those bubble screens. And you have got to hit the bubble screen wide if you're going to throw it. That time, Detweiler held the football and treated that screen almost like it was a slant. It brought the screen back into the middle of the field, and that's where Brelsford was sitting. And Brelsford was staring him the whole way. And you could tell Snyder has scouted Goshen extremely well because they were ready for that play, Joe. Snyder sets up in the straight eye formation with Stroud as the up back. Dominic Scott is back in there as the running back starts left, cuts back to his right, finds a hole, and nobody lays a glove on him. Easy touchdown run for Dominic Scott, his second of the ball game at the 49.8 second mark, and suddenly it's 20 to nothing in favor of the Panthers. And we talked in the pregame, the Snyder was going to put that game behind them if the hangover was over. It's over. You know, they're ready for they're ready for playoff football. I could see Steveling warming up Joe and down the sideline before the kickoff and he was ready to go. And and this is as good as Snyder has looked now in the first quarter as we've seen. So Boozman will be attempting the extra point. Two for two today so far. Waiting for the snap and the right footed kick is certainly long enough and it is good. So the Panthers cash in on a one-play touchdown run. Dominic Scott, his second of the ball game, cashing in after the interception by Drew Brelsford. 21-0 Panthers here at home, and we'll be back. This is IHSW Tournament Football on Fox Sports 1250, The Ticket. The game just isn't the game without you. When pain or injury has you sidelined, call Parkview Sports Medicine at 260 266 
4007. Whether you're an aspiring pro or a recreational athlete, our team of certified orthopedic surgeons, physical therapists, athletic trainers, and registered dietitian nutritionists will provide you with rapid access to comprehensive care and sport-specific rehabilitation. We can get you back to the action quickly and safely. Just call 260-266-4007. Parky Sports Medicine, your dream team. And now back to the IHS AA football game of the week with Joe Parson on Fox Sports 1250, The Ticket. Snyder came into the ball game with 10 interceptions, 26 sacks, and that by Brelsford is his second of the year, and it propels Snyder out to this 21-0 lead. Just a great start for Snyder, Joe. You know, a great start to play off football, and it's going to be interesting to see what kind of run Snyder can make. I mean, you look across, we have no score right now with Concord and Northside, and we've heard good things about Concord, so it's going to be interesting who they will encounter as they make a playoff run. Brady Bechtel back, the ball will bounce to him. He's got it inside the 15, works right side, 20-25, and uh, tries to come back to the hash mark and is down at about the 30-yard line. So here come the Redskins now trying to get things going here as they'll have it first and 10 on the short end of a 21-0 score with still 42.7 seconds remaining in this very fast-moving first quarter. And I think it's a situation where they want to take a deep breath, get back to your run game, run the ball a little bit, you know, mix in your pass game, but try to you know, slow down and calm down because right now it's 21-0. They're going to run you out of the stadium. You've got to get some first downs. Joe, I want to ask you after this play, back in your career at Southside, do you remember a game where you got down big and then the rally high snap, but they'll hand the ball off up the middle. Let's see if that's stolen there to run the ball now, and he'll be trying to push the pile forward and does to about the 32. That'll be a gain of a couple of yards. Yeah, we got down big in that sectional championship game against Homestead, and that was, gosh, that was all the way back in 1990. But what we did was, we stuck to what we believed in. We didn't, we didn't worry so much about the score. That's an easy thing to say, but we said, keep playing, keep playing. It's like chopping a tree. Keep chopping, keep chopping. You have to stick with what you do. Now, it's, it's tough when you're down 21 nothing, but we're just heading into the second quarter. Get back to your run game and settle down and play that physical brand of football that got you five wins. Final seconds tick away, so it'll be 21-0 Snyder. It'll be Goshen with the ball. They'll have it second down and seven. When we return to Spooler Stadium, this is IHS AA Tournament Football on Fox Sports 1250, the ticket. I like things fast. That's why I like roller coasters, guitar solo, and race cars. That's also why I love Fios Internet from Frontier. Now with one year of Amazon Prime. I use blazing fast Fios Internet to get instant access to Amazon Prime movies and TV shows. Plus, I get unlimited photo storage, music, and Kindle books. And it can't beat free two-day shipping. Get Fios Internet from Frontier for $24.99 per month with qualifying phone service and one-year agreement on new internet service. And get one year of Amazon Prime. Call 1-888-FRONTIER. Oh, yeah. Life in the fast lane. Get Fios Internet for $24.99 per month with 30 megabits per second upload and download speed and get one year of Amazon Prime included. Call 1-888-FRONTIER. Limited time offer for qualifying services. Taxes, fees, and other restrictions apply. One year of Amazon Prime service included with one year agreement on new internet service. A maximum $100 early termination fee applies. Subject to availability. Fios marks owned by Verizon Trademark Services, LLC, and used under license. You're listening to the High School Football Game of the Week on WGL Fort Wayne, Fox Sports 1250, The Ticket. Glad you could join us here at Spooler Stadium with Joe Auburn. I'm Joe Parson. It was 50 degrees at kickoff, partly cloudy skies, winds out of the south-southwest at about 6 miles an hour, wind chill about 47. It'll get down to the mid-40s. Here's a screen coming near side. Johnson's got it met and dropped. Whew. Wow. Good defense once again coming up on the corner position. That was a good defensive play by Snyder's D'Angelo Stroud. Yeah, he's a nice looking ball player, Joe. Six feet, 170 pounds, only a junior. Should be able to put another 20, 25 pounds on that frame. And he's, he's an all-conference type player. He'll be a big time player next year. And I think he's gonna be highly recruited, Joe. Was second and seven with the loss now. It was a completed pass, but for a loss, it's third down and 10. And some scores to pass along. Dwanger 16, New Haven nothing as they enter halftime. Halftime out Southwest. Homestead 14, Carroll 10. Maybe a little bit of a surprise to a lot of people. That's a Homestead team that's gotten much better as the season's gone on. 
Deadwell again looking at Blitz coming up the middle, rolls to his left, that's picked up and throws the ball long down to the corner, but that one's sailing out of bounds. Tended for Bechtel on the far sidelines, but again, well defended by uh, the uh, Panthers. A couple other scores to pass along, Joe. A great matchup down Decatur. Belmont 17, Concordia 7. So I like Concordia in that game, but Belmont seems to be pretty physical. Leo 19, Southside nothing. We were fortunate to beat Marion last week for our second win, but it's going to be a tough haul against Leo tonight. And Concord 7, Northside nothing. So there's, there's some updates on some scores. Connor Glick in to punt the ball away. Waits at his 15-yard line. Two back and punt return. Rush is coming. The kick is away. Nice sailing ball. Hip and hammer fields. It spins back to it inside his 30. Works to midfield being chased. He's not got much to work with and is brought down. Good uh, punt coverage that time by Goshen. It'll be first and 10. Snyder back inside their 30 at around the 27-yard line. Yeah, discipline that time for Goshen. Hippenhammer was trying to get outside, but Goshen's well coached, and they stayed in their lanes and got down there and made that tackle. So, Penalty apparently by a referee, Chad Gibson. Let's see what that's going to be about. Is it going to be against... It's going to be a personal foul on Snyder. I think what happened on that, Joe, somebody got a little got a little extra aggressive and, and decked somebody after the play was over for Snyder. So you don't see that very often for Snyder over the years, the personal foul. So that's going to move Snyder all the way back, Joe, I believe, to their 12-yard line. So that's, that's a big penalty. As far as penalties, Snyder's averaging for the year just under 70 yards a ball game. Two weeks ago here against Southville, they had nine penalties for 83 yards. So that one, let's see where they do put the ball down. Well, it's still at the... Yeah, you got to mark the penalty off. I think it's going to be a... I thought it was a personal foul. Now they're also saying there was a clip, so we'll see what it's going to be. I think it's going to go back. Now they do walk it off from the 27. Yeah, maybe, maybe back to Snyder's 18 now, Joe. I stand corrected. They're going to take it back inside the 15 to about the 14 okay, yard line. 14 yard line. Yeah, so they, 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 so it was a personal foul that they enforced. Big penalty. So now a chance for Goshen to get a three and out with Snyder and maybe get some, get some better field position. Obviously, the poorest starting field position of the night for the Panthers. They lead it 21 to nothing. And here's a low snap. They hand the money. No, it's a keeper by Stiebling trying to sweep to his left, catch to the 10, and uh, trying to get a block out here and fights his way maybe back to the 14 of the line of scrimmage. And fortunate to get that done. Yeah, I think that time Stiebling wanted to hand that football off, but it was a busted play. And the Goshen corner did a nice job of keeping contained and getting Stiebling down. So a good start to this series defensively for Goshen. Money Woods is back there. He's the running back. He's run for a touchdown. Dominic Scott has run for two in this 21-0 lead by the Panthers. There's movement at the line of scrimmage, and they've got him. A hard count by Stiebling, I believe. And that's, that, that makes you so angry if you're a coach for Goshen because, you know, you're lined up right over the football if you're Goshen. That's your defensive tackle. And, and Stiebling changes the snap count and changes, you know, the, the pitch of his voice and gets an easy five yards. So... I think it might have been Jordan Holly that jumped here yeah, on the defensive right that. side. That ball is right in front of you. Just watch the football. He had nine tackles, three for loss. And here is a play to the right side and a run. There's Money Woods, and he's up to the 30. He's got a first down and all the way to the 32-yard line, running hard again. Yeah, just a zip the ball out there at that time from Stiebling to make that connection. But I think we're going to have a, um, I think we're going to have a hold that time out there, possibly on um, Malik Bramley, Joe. You know, I was about to say one of the things yeah. we've not seen many penalties against Snyder. I don't think we had a single one in the first quarter, but they're now. We've had two on uh, two plays here against the Panthers, and that'll back them up again. Yeah, and that was a big hole because that was a nice pitch and catch that time for Snyder. So they're going to move that ball back, and I think Snyder's going to be back in a hole, Joe. David Turner will check in. Part He'll have two wide to the left side, including Hippenhammer. But they're <laughs> still backpedaling with a penalty walk-off. It'll take the ball back inside the 15 to about, the, what, the 12, yeah, 13? And, and you hate the penalties, too, if you run that hurry-up offense because the penalties kill your momentum to get your plays in and out. Second and 11, Hippenhammer comes in motion. They'll give the ball to, oh, it's a throw near side. There's a catch near side and uh, gain out to about the 16-yard line. 
not a lot of yardage that time, but uh, Br Bryson Haft, a little uh, misdirection play. They put hip and hammer in motion left to right and throw back to the left side, and Haft uh, picks up the catch. That's his seventh of the year. Yeah, I like that play because it's so much misdirection. It's so easy to lose that tight end. That time Goshen does a nice job, but I like the play call with Snyder. Stiebling out of the gun, short drop, looks right, has time, throws and launches and catches the ball. That's half again. He's got a first down down the right sidelines, bumped out of bounds, so the, they list him as a tight end. The 6'3", 200-pound junior has had back-to-back -back catches now in first and 10 for the Panthers. And that's just a great toss that time, Joe. I mean, Romeo Johnson had good coverage out there, but that play was in Snyder's favor because Stiebling made an excellent pass. And that ball had to be out in front half that time to make that play work. And Stiebling shows his accuracy and arm strength. Here's a sweep coming up to the left side. Hippenhammer trying to outrun. He's to the 35, turns the corner, 40-yard line, and out of bounds up around the 45. Snyder fans thought maybe there might have been a hit out of bounds. The officials kind of separating some of the uh, the players down there, but it uh, looks like no harm, no foul. It will be yet another first down for Snyder. And man, Hippenhammer so fast out there, isn't he, Joe? He's got speed. David Turner now in to the near side joining Hippenhammer. We'll take a look at that Snyder offensive line. They average 238 tackle to tackle. Here's Money Woods up the middle, running room to the midfield, 45. Still on his feet. Shedding tacklers inside the 30 and down to about the 27-yard line goes Money Woods. Whew, what a run. Boy, his daddy had great hands, but his daddy didn't have feet like that. I mean, you talk about feet and the ability to cut. One cut. He just glides. He just glides. He's awesome. He's he is something else. Now it's going to be break. interesting, Joe, if he gets much bigger in the weight room and 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 where he's going to play his college football. I know he's only he's only a junior, but wow, what an explosive player. Joe Thornton at center, Justin Munoz and Trevor Thomas, the guards. They look to Money Woods again, off tackle to the right and stepping, cuts to the outside, stripping uh, tacklers and finally knocked down inside the. No, he's still on his feet inside the twenty. He's <laughs> going to score. Wow, he would not go down. That will be a 28-yard touchdown run by Money Woods. I thought he was down, Joe, at inside the 15 at about the 10, but Money thought otherwise. He broke one, two, three, four, five, six tackles, possibly seven tackles, but I love it. They get in the eye formation. They put the big fullback, DeAndrew Stroud, in there, 5'11", 230, and they play traditional Panther football, and they run the counter-off tackle. Stroud kicks out the defensive end, and Money Woods just runs over everybody in the way to the end zone. That's Panther football, and that is physical football. So Dominic Scott has scored two touchdowns. Money Woods, two touchdowns now, and Boozman with the extra point. 28-0 Panthers with a timeout. And we'll be back to Spooler Stadium. Things going well for Snyder here tonight in their 5A sectional opener. This is IHSAA Tournament Football on Fox Sports 1250, the ticket. If you are one of the many Hoosiers suffering for years from neck and back pain, we have good news for you. Did you know there are now new, non-surgical approaches to easing, reducing, and even eliminating pain in the neck, back, and spine? You are invited to Aaron Chiropractic, located on Fort Wayne's northeast side of College Park, just off Delhar Road, to discover a new approach, a new treatment plan for pain relief and pain management. The start to a pain-free lifestyle may be just a phone call away. What are you waiting for? Call Aaron Chiropractic to set up an initial visit. Their number is 260-492-8811. One call. That can mean the return to a life without pain. Aaron Chiropractic. Let's get back to the stadium with more IHS AA football action and Joe Parson on Fox Sports 1250, The Ticket. Looks like Kyle Park may have called a timeout during that uh, break after the touchdown run. He needs to settle down his team. They have been shocked by four rushing touchdowns by Snyder, two each by Dominic Scott, and most recently two now by Money Woods in this 28-0 Snyder onslaught. And another score update, Joe. Bishop Lures 26, Yorktown nothing as they head to halftime. So Lures got things rolling. We gave you the score of Homestead 14, um, Carroll 10, also, now in the third quarter, it's Leo 41, Southside nothing. You know what, man? Take it easy, okay? Take the foot off the gas. Let us get back on the buses and head back down Calhoun. And then Belmont 17, Concordia 7. Then one surprise, Eastside 13, 
Woodland seven. That kind of surprised me. I thought I thought Woodland would have their way with East Side, but you know, interesting interesting games across the area. We see Lures flexing their muscles, Dwanger flexing their muscles, Joe, and um, here Snyder just absolutely rolling. You mentioned Woodland. They're only giving up 10 points a ball game. They're 10th best yeah. in the state, but uh, problems tonight at home against Eastside. Corbin Harrison is back deep and kick return. I believe that's Ramil Johnson also back there as well as Snyder. They lead it here in this 5A sectional opener at home over uh, Goshen at 20 to nothing. Morgan Redding for the go-ahead from the officials has got it. Now puts the foot into the ball. Long end over end near side. Harrison's got it at the 15. And what happened? Whistles blew. I'm it, assuming either Snyder was off sides or, they, or the refs weren't ready to have the football kicked. Usually uh, Morgan waits until he gets that go-ahead. I thought yeah, the far side official said you were good to go, big yeah. fella. But uh, <laughs> You know what's interesting tonight, though, Joe? Snyder's doing it on the ground. And they lined up last time, Joe, in the I formation. We've seen so much of Steven in the spread. Now, they came out and attacked in the spread, but they lined up in the I formation and played power football. But think about it. They started, they hit some passes with Malik Bramley, too, that, that again, the, yep. the pass set up the run, in, in a sense. It seems like Snyder has come out here and really wanted to define themselves and be physical. And I think maybe that was something with the Dwanger game. They felt like, looking back at that tape, they tried to finesse them too much. They threw the ball too much. Maybe they should have just lined up in the eye and come, come right after them. But, but give Dwanger credit. Dwanger's an extremely physical football team, as New Haven's finding out tonight. Morgan's waiting. He's not going to do anything until he gets a visual <laughs> sign this time. Now he's got the go-ahead. This time a line drive low kick. Hits at the 30, and it kind of took good. a dead bounce. That's a free ball. And Harrison does pounce on her. Uh, around the 26, 27 yard line. So that's where Goshen goes to work once again. You know, Joe, I was talking to one of the Snyder assistant coaches before the ball game, and I said, did, did you like the week off, the bye? Because it did, did give you a chance to heal up a little bit. And he I bet shook not. his head no. Nope, nope, because they were said, mad. After that 48 to they 6 win, they wanted, the in, they wanted to keep the intensity up. Sure. But, sure. Uh, you know, Kurt Tippmann did tell us, you heard in the interview, got a chance to work on some things, trying to get better. Sure. But they wanted to play. They wanted to play because they took it out in South, but that just wasn't enough. I didn't give them enough, you know. They want to take it out in somebody else. Deadweiler hands the ball off and uh, working to the right side, and here's a nice uh, move by Back. Back is back in there. Dylan Back, the 5'7 junior running back. And, and you made an interesting point early on. Snyder's going to hate to hear this because, my God, he'd wanted to win that game so bad against Dwanger. I think that could be the fuel that wakes them up, makes them play harder, elevates their game, and that might just be the fuel that gets them down to Indianapolis, Joe. We will see. But you're right. Uh, the monkey's off their back now. And, uh, you know, it kind of, they, they know they've got to play now like every game's their last. Here's a running play off to the right side. And, boy, the second wave came in there defensively and just not a hole there between guard and tackle as back just flips the ball over his shoulder back to the official. Goshen's physical and big and strong up front, but I don't think they've played anybody. And all due respect to Concord and Plymouth, Joe, they haven't played anybody who's big and strong but is also fast like this. There's the NLC, Joe, and then there's the SAC. Oh, my gosh. And the SAC was a man's brutal. conference this year, just absolutely brutal. But the way those backers for Snyder and those big black jerseys can chase to the football, it's tough to get hats on them. Deadweiler rolling to his right side, throws on the run, a low ball, and uh, Remil Johnson tried to reach down there and catch it. He did. He'll have it, but short of the first down at his own 33-yard line. So it's going to bring up fourth down, I believe. It's so hard to roll to your left when you're a right-handed quarterback and throw that football. You have to really get your shoulders around and get that ball out. It's tough to be accurate. And it's just a tough position for Detweiler to throw that football. Penalty against Snyder, though, and it was holding, defensive holding against the Panthers, so it'll be an automatic first down. So the Panthers now getting a little chippy. And that's... And that's some momentum for Goshen. That's the ability to get some more yards. 
And now, you know, you say it's 28 nothing. If you're Coach Park, you manage the liability. Right now, the scoreboard's the liability, but let's get down. Let's get some positive plays. Let's get this ball in the end zone. If you can go down 28 to 7, or maybe even the 28 to 14 at halftime, you still have life. Two wide either side of the field. Ball's at the 43 now. First and 10. 8.03 remaining in the first half. Detweiler, protector to his left. And high snap again. Got it, rolls to his left side. Throws high ball. Looking uh, sideline left. That ball is intercepted, I believe. It was picked off, and Snyder's got it back again. Yeah, I just I tell you what, I don't understand the play calling for Goshen. It is so difficult to throw the ball. When you're rolling out to your left to be a right-handed quarterback, it's so difficult to w go across your body and throw the ball, and then to throw it that far down the field. Joe, that was a linebacker. That was Isaiah Knight Narasin that picked off that ball. He was step for step with a yeah. would-be receiver. Because they can run. Because Snyder can run. And you're going to have a heck of a time throwing a, a go route on the outside when you're rolling your quarterback out like that. And he was initially open. I mean, you make the point, he was open, but the closing speed to make that play. So the Panthers take over at their own 29-yard line now. And uh, play action, fake the quick slant. That one was nearly intercepted. A little bit behind David Turner, the intended receiver, running the quick slant, but that time Stiebling tried to thread it in there and nearly picked off second down and 10. Snyder's not made many mistakes here tonight on offense so far in this first half. No, they haven't at that time. Stiebling's lucky that wasn't an interception. You have to be careful with those passes across the middle. Here is uh, Stiebling again, hands the ball off. They're trying to run wide to the left side. Here's Dominic Scott, splits defenders and keeps his balance and plows straight ahead to the 40-yard line to the 42 in fact he's got a first down they had him stopped initially slowed up at the 35 and he was very patient to let the blocks and the play develop and that time Scott plants the outside leg and you're not going to tackle him hitting him high you know they hit him high and Scott just bounces off those tackles you got to hit him low and you have to wrap up Kenny Hurt getting a start tonight in one of the tackle positions tonight for Kurt Tipman and doing a good job. First and 10 at the 42-yard line. Here's the zone read. Dominic Scott breaks it out to this right side in angles, and he's into the second level inside the 45 and down to the 42-yard line of Goshen. He goes. Yeah, and it just seems like all of a sudden now Snyder's going to line up, and they're either going to run the spread of the power eye, and they're going to run the ball right down Goshen's throat. And right now, Goshen has no answer, Joe. Nose of the football just outside the Goshen 42. It'll be first and 10 from the right side hash mark. Zenden Dellinger starts at the other tackle. He's a 270-pound junior 6'6". Great prospect. <laughs> He's uh, still filling out, shall we say. First and 10. Zone read once again on the option. And they'll give it off. And here's Scott this time tripped up. And a good job breaking through there. I believe it was Ramil Johnson who yeah. came up and got the penetration across the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he appears to be their best player. Ramil Johnson's in on every single play. And he plays right along with these Snyder kids. Good player, Johnson. Good prospect, Joe. We saw him early in the ball game where he leapfrogged in one bound two Snyder defenders. Now out of the pistol. Here is Stiebling on second down and long. And he'll give to Scott again, looking for running room. And he keeps uh, pushes the pile, but knocked down right about the 42. It may give him another yard inside the 42-yard line, but now Goshen kind of reacting a little bit and stiffening against this run attack by Snyder. Yeah, again, Johnson coming up, making the tackle, and just a good-looking player. Only a junior, Joe, 6 feet, 170 pounds, looks about a buck 80 out there. A heck of a prospect for Goshen. Bramley wide to the right side as Stiebling wants to throw. Time of the pocket. Now it disappears. Throws to his right on a scrambled. And look, you know, he keeps the ball, tucks it, and Dick steps out of bounds. Short of the first down inside the Goshen 35 to around the 33-yard line. Good recognition. He wanted to go deep to Bramley that time, but he was covered. He came back off to Hippenhammer. Hippenhammer was covered, so he was able to tuck the football, Joe, and get some positive yards, and it puts him in a position on fourth down here where they can roll the dice. They can gamble because they're in Goshen's territory. At the 35 is where they spot it. It'll be fourth down and three. We have 558 remaining in this first half. Straight eye formation. There was movement in the line of scrimmage again. Stiebling backs away. Play clock is at 10. He's got time 
Scott is the tailback in the eye. The ball is dropped, picked up by Stiebling, and then he falls down. <laughs> Lost his footing back in the 44, so it'll be uh, Goshen holding on downs. They'll take over, and they'll have the ball in decent field position at their own 43. I know what he was thinking. He fumbles the snap. He gets away with that. He's thinking to himself, oh, my gosh, I'm going to roll out and get away with this, and he trips, you know. <laughs> Sometimes plays just aren't designed to work, you know, but but lucky break for Goshen to get that stop. 28 nothing. almost six minutes left in the first half. Can Goshen go down and get some points, Joe? That would be so huge for them. First and 10, the Redskins come up the line of scrimmage now. Detweiler looking, hands it off the back, angled run to the left side, turning the corner, got the midfield. Did he get into Snyder territory? Does not appear so. 5.44 on the clock. They'll mark it right at midfield. It'll be second down. That's a pretty good run, though. And uh, second down, let's call it a long four. Those are the football still just on the Goshen side of mid-stripe. Second down and four. They'll work from the left side hash mark now. Shotgun formation once again. There was movement at the line defensively, and here's back trying to, and it slips off a tackle. He's got a first down inside the Snyder 45 to the 44-yard line. And see, Joe, that's their game. The physicality of running the counteraction with the running backs, that's what Goshen should be doing, and that's what Goshen wants to get back to. And we have an injury timeout. One of the Panthers is down. That'll stop the clock with 5 minutes, 12 seconds remaining. Injury timeout brought to you by Parkview Sports Medicine, a winning combination with the IHSAA. 28 nothing our score with a timeout down on the field. We'll be back. This is IHSAA football on Fox Sports 1250, the ticket. To those who say, just as the sun rises in the east, so too must breakfast be enjoyed in the morning. McDonald's now says, yeah, we don't really agree with that. Introducing McDonald's new all-day breakfast menu. Now you can get a hot and freshly made Egg McMuffin sandwich, hash browns, and other delectable breakfast tastes day and night. It's time to start enjoying the breakfast you love anytime you wish. Breakfast items vary by location. Deliciousness doesn't. And now back to the IHS AA football game of the week with Joe Parson on Fox Sports 1250, the ticket. That was Lawrence Johnson, but he... Pop right up to his feet and came off the field. Looks like he's going to be okay. It'll be first and 10 for the Redskins now working from the Snyder 44-yard line. Deadweiler, short drop, looks near side and throws the ball now looking for, and it's a little bit too far intended for Corbin Harrison. He's a six-foot senior who came into the game with 36 catches and 431 receiving yards, but couldn't find the handle on that one. It kind of sailed on Detweiler incomplete. And why I go away from the run game? The run game has got you so minimum. You're moving the football. You ask your quarterback to throw a fade route to the wide side of the field on first down. It's poor play calling. Get back to the run game and, and load up and run that ball downhill. You've had some success with that. Second down in 10. Too wide to the right once again. Deadweiler looks that way, waiting for the snaps. Got it. Now hands the ball off up the middle, and that'll be a run to about the 41-yard line of the Panthers. They went back to the run game, Joe, and let's see, it was uh, Dylan Back uh, get, got the call. He only had uh, two carries for 27 yards two weeks ago against Wawa. See, there's a reason for that because you look at him, he's also a two-way player at uh, linebacker. He leads him with 114 tackles coming in. And on that ball game against Wallace, he had 14 tackles, and he had two sacks. Wow. That's a huge game on the, from the defensive standpoint. But now it's third down and seven for the Redskins, and they'll run the ball once again and fighting for the first down stick, and it looks like they'll have it. That's yeah. Bax pushing the pile all the way down inside the 30-yard line. And that's what they need to do. They're physical. They can run the football. Snyder's fast up front, but they're not always the biggest, Joe. And now we saw this, the big sophomore go out of the game with an injury for Snyder. So you have you have the ability, Johnson that was, for Snyder. So you have the ability to run the football here. Now I know it's 28 to nothing with four minutes left. Chip away, chip away. You do that by running the football. Craig G Gregory will check into the ball game for the Panthers now, trying to get a little beef up the middle against that run attack of Goshen. 3.55 on the clock, moving. Deadwire looks again back, and there's a cut to the left side. Stalled. Did he lose the ball? He was kind of looking down. Jeff Stoll came in there, and uh, he's got a gain now the inside the 25 to the 24 of Snyder. 
and boy did they have a big hole out there, Joe. And if it wasn't for Demarius Ridley, the defensive back, making that tackle, that would have been a touchdown for Goshen. Well, there comes Lawrence Johnson back in there, the 275-pound sophomore, and trying to anchor up things. That was a gain of six, second down and four. Two wide to the right, the wide side of the field. Detweiler runs, stall again with the ball. No, he kept it himself. Detweiler, they've got him trapped as holding on. Pretty good defensive play that time by number 14, Isaiah Knight Narasson, who has got an interception and kept uh, Detweiler from picking up the first down. It'll be third down and two. Yeah, he makes a nice play in the backfield to slow Detweiler down. So, so good defense with Snyder. They got the big sophomore Johnson back in the game. So now we'll see what Goshen wants to do here. If I was Goshen, I'd probably keep the ball on the ground, try to run the football again here. Snyder's had two interceptions in this first half already. Deadwire with the snap, looks again to hand it off, and uh, they'll run it right side to the 20-yard line. Let's see if they've got enough yardage, or that depends on the spot of the ball. Looks like they will have a new set of downs to work with. And now, you know, Right before halftime, it seems like Goshen is settling in now. They're figuring out what they want to do on offense, and it's going to be interesting, Joe, if they can get the ball in the end zone, but also keep an eye on the clock. I mean, the clock's ticking down, and when you run the football, the clock can also be an issue against you. Jeff Stahl stays in. There's the running back. He's flanked to the left of Detweiler. He's been the featured back on this series, and they'll look to him again, I believe as he runs straight up the middle and uh, he's got a good gain inside the 10, inside the five and still pushing the pile down. Well, they're gonna mark him down back around the six yard line, but boy, impressive drive of the making now for the jo Goshen Redskins. Yeah, they found the formula of how to be successful against Snyder. Now the question is, can they execute, get the points in the end zone, and can they carry this over into the second half? But that's how they went from 0-10, Joe, to 5-4. and 4. They became physical, and they made the commitment to run the football. And leadership, Kyle Park said. That's oh, yes. been a big difference from a year ago. Too wide to the right. Saul stays in, I believe, is the running back. Deadweiler's had success. He looks the back this time. Curls up the middle, and he's into the end zone untouched. Dylan Beck with the rushing touchdown, his third of the season at the 2.02 mark. So the fourth down stop pays dividends, and Goshen cashes in as they are into the end zone for six. And I think Goshen found their identity in this game. They got a big offensive line, averaging 255 yards across, Joe. They just put their hands in the dirt and moved the ball down the field that time. So now if you're Snyder, as we're getting close to halftime, you're going to have to make an adjustment, and you're probably going to have to roll a safety or put another big body up front to slow Goshen down. Tyler Brinson on to attempt the extra point. He's 7 of 9 in conversions this year. Trying to make a 28 to 7. Kick is long enough and looks good and is good. So that'll make a 28 to 7 with a stoppage here at Spooler Stadium. Still a lead of 21 for the Panthers. We'll be back with a kickoff coming up. This is IHS AA Tournament Football on Fox Sports 1250, the ticket. Here's a money-saving tip from Momper, the number one name in insulation since 1956. Exposed attic ceiling joists and ductwork or new snow that quickly melts off your roof means you need to add insulation. We'll fill empty sidewall cavities with insulation, even through masonry, aluminum, or vinyl siding with no unsightly holes. Plus, we'll seal your crawl space with urethane foam for a total insulation package. Call Momper now for a free, no-obligation energy analysis of your home. Let's get back to the stadium with more IHS AA football. Joe Parson on Fox Sports 1250, the ticket. Glad to have you with us tonight at Spooler Stadium with Joe Auburn. I'm Joe Parson, and, and the world looks a little bit brighter right now to Kyle Park and the Goshen Redskins. They finally uh, cashed in, trailing a 20 to nothing. They get a five, a 70-yard touchdown run by Dylan back to make it 28-7 now. And would they go onside, Joe? It'd be tempting. You know, you've got some momentum. You know, you want to get out there. You want your defense to make a hold. So I expect they'll probably kick the ball deep and try to play some defense. But you're definitely going to have some momentum going to the locker room and through Goshen. That was a great drive, and it was very physical. Snyder won the toss to third. They'll get the ball to start the second half. Don't forget, Katrina Newman joined us at halftime with the interview, talking about here's a high, short kick. That'll be fielded and a run by Dominic Scott across the 25 to the 30 and brings that across the 35 
That ball was a moonshot. Didn't went uh, very far, but it went high. And Scott brings it up short of his own 40-yard line. It'll be first and 10 Snyder at the Panther 39. And you don't see your starting tailback very often be an up back on kick return. I was wondering who was going to get that ball, and I thought, my gosh, that's Dominique Scott. You know? <laughs> that, of course, is a free ball. That's anybody's ball, but Scott was there. Did not call for the fair catch. Now, now you know Snyder's going to want to come back and throw the ball here. They're going to want to answer that score. So this is probably going to decide, you know, what happens in your second half here. If Goshen can get a stop and stay in this game, or if Snyder just screams down the field and gets a touchdown. Turner wide to the right side. Stevling throws short. He's got a catch. And looking to thread his way across the 45. It'll be a gain of about eight, nine yards up to about the 48-yard line. Snyder, I believe, has got all three of their timeouts remaining. Boy, Hippenhammer's tough on those screens. He can cut back across the field so fast, and you have got to have the discipline to chase backside. This time too wide to the left, and it's Stiebling rolling that way, throws on the run, has got a catch at the 40-yard line. Bramley spins on his feet, 35-30, and back pedals down inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. Malik Bramley with some nice moves. Oh, sweet moves in between Turner and Bramley and Hippenhammer. Then you look in the backfield, Scott and Woods, so many weapons. First and 10, clock stopped while they move the chains. 122, it moves again. And Stiebling looking, zone read now, gives to Money Woods, and up the middle he goes inside the 15 to the 10, still on his feet, cuts to the right side, trying to score, back pedals. Did he get in? Touchdown. Touchdown. Whew. Well, these guys are not giving any indication. <laughs> but you knew that, well, I tell you what, Money Woods just unstoppable here tonight. Unstoppable, and he disappeared out there that time. You couldn't see because he only goes five foot eight, and all the big guys are chasing him while he breaks tackles. But I got to check at halftime to see how many yards Money Woods has picked up after the initial contact. Another big run, and he only goes 5'8", 170, but he runs like he's 220 out there, Joe. Joe, that's about a 70-yard drive in what, under a minute. So now Boozman on to try to make it 35-7. And a quick snap, and the kick is away. End over end, and that is good. Well, they got the indication on that. 35-7 in favor of Snyder, so they bounce back and answer the touchdown of Goshen with one of their own. This is IHSAA Tournament Football on Fox Sports, 1250 the ticket. Satisfied with your bank? Have you considered a credit union? Midwest America offers about any service you need. The convenience of free mobile banking, debit cards, ATMs, free online banking and bill payer, competitive loans, mortgages, and more. Deposits insured to a half million dollars. Hey, consider this an invitation. Your next bank should be a credit union. Midwest America Federal Credit Union. Midwest America Federal Credit Union. And now back to the IHS AA Football Game of the Week with Joe Parson on Fox Sports 1250, The Ticket. Well, you talk about your two-minute drill, and Kurt tippman has got to be happy with the execution of his offense for the Snyder Panthers. They give up the touchdown and come right back and run, move the ball 70 yards in just under a minute. Yeah, impressive. A great answer and a devastating touchdown to give up if you're, jo if you're Goshen. So the Panthers will kick it away again from right to left to 110 on the clock. Here's the kick, and uh, near side it comes. Low ball, it's fielded at the 15, run by Johnson's running room, dragging tacklers across the 30, 35, and still on his feet up to about the 37, and this young man runs hard. Wow, is he a fighter? What an effort, and I love how he runs the kickoffs back. Joe, he gets that ball, and he just blasts out of there. He is all business. Isn't yeah, he? he's all business. He's a special type of player, and he's a player who will play big-time ball on the next level, only a junior. So now we'll see what Goshen tries to do. They've got a minute remaining. They used one of their timeouts, so they've got at least two remaining. Detweiler now trots back onto the field. He came in with his numbers, 137 of 235 for the year, completing 58% of his passes, 1,401 yards, eight touchdowns, 10 interceptions. He's been picked twice tonight in this first half. Looks to hand the ball off, and here is a... Tough run, but Snyder tough defensively as well. Gain just only across the 40-yard line. It looks like Snyder now has made some adjustments up front. Got some bigger bodies in. They're going to try to close down 
the middle of those lanes against that run, run offense for Goshen. Austin France came in there, second down and eight. Here's a quick toss to the left side. Johnson turns the corner. He's down the left sidelines in a foot race inside the 30-yard line to the 25 and then bumped out of bounds. And maybe a hit out of bounds. There's a penalty flag over there on the Goshen side as well. Yeah, it's going to be a late hit on Snyder. So Goshen's going to be able to get that ball. I believe that ball is going to be down on Snyder's six-yard line, Joe. So how about Johnson? Snyder has the angle, and Johnson turns the corner, and it looks like those Snyder guys are running in mud. You don't see that very often. I think on defense, Snyder has the fastest team in the area, Joe, as far as chasing, and Johnson just ran away from him that time. It is personal foul, the call against Snyder. And the walk-off now, will it be half the distance, or will they take the full 15? We'll find out in a moment. I believe it's going to be the full 15. I think it's going to be down to the six-yard line. Now they're going to bring it down. Bring it halfway. By the way, your TCU team looked pretty good last night, didn't they? I tell you what, and now all of a sudden, Baylor's quarterback, poor guy, broke his neck. So you're loving my futures ticket. I know you're watching. I've been telling you all year long. I got TCU in the futures ticket. It's one of those tickets you grab on the way out of Vegas. You know, when you're at the, heading to the airport, Joe, you know? First and 10 at the 11. <laughs> they can pick up a first down with that scoring. Still 29.1 seconds remaining. Detweiler out of the gun again. Wants to run the ball. And then there's nothing there. That time they came through. Was that uh, Knight or Narasin, I believe? Yeah, that was Narasin. Narasin sheds the block and fills the hole. And the play needed to go outside for Goshen, but they back couldn't get there because Snyder got there so fast. And I think Goshen now, you're forced to throw the football here. We've got a timeout, a loss of one, second and 11. Let's sl slide in a quick 30-second break. This is IHSW football on Fox Sports 1250, the ticket. The market goes up, the market goes down. And if you're a typical investor, you may be playing games, trying to guess correctly. When to buy, when to sell. That can be expensive and exhausting. Well, what if there was a local company with tons of investment experience to help you take some of the guesswork and worry out of investing? The name is Stiefel, specializing in individual portfolio management. Stiefel can help reduce the risk and worry of investing, building you a portfolio of quality, performing stocks and bonds. Give Stiefel a call at 260-459-3989. Let's get back to the stadium with more IHS AA football action and Joe Parson on Fox Sports 1250, the ticket. Story of the ball game so far, five rushing touchdowns by Snyder. But now Goshen trying to cash in before intermission. Here's Deadwild, looks for the quick screen, and the ball is not complete. Double covered that time. They were trying to get threaded into Corbin Harrison's hands. That'll take the clock down to 20.2 seconds remaining. It'll bring up third down and 11. And you're going to have to throw this football into the end zone. Everybody loves those bubble screens, but if you haven't thrown the ball down the field all game, Snyder's not going to respect that bubble screen. So you need to throw something in the end zone. Maybe you have a slot back that runs a skinny post here, but you want to get the ball into the end zone. Ramil Johnson split to the short side to the left, but here's Detweiler. Looks right, throws right, and a high ball right through the outstretched hands. Incomplete. I believe that was Bechtel on the intended reception, but the coverage was there, and Isaiah Knight Narasin, the linebacker, had the coverage assignment and incomplete. Yeah, Narasin makes a nice play to close on that. They had the right play, but he threw it to the slot back that ran the out. On the outside, the wide receiver ran the split post. He had the post on the inside right in the end zone for the touchdown, so he just missed the read that time. Going to attempt a field goal, I believe, right now. See if it's Brinson on. This would be a 30-yard field goal from the left side hash mark. 15.1 seconds remaining. 30-yard attempt. It's certainly long enough. Looks good on the way. It is good. So it is Tyler Brinson with a 30-yard field goal. They were two of three on the year. Field goals make it three out of four now. So the 30-yard field goal will make it 35-10. With still 10.8 seconds left in the first half. We'll be back. This is IHSAA Tournament Football on Fox Sports 1250, the ticket. You've heard the saying, it's all about the Benjamins. Nothing could be more true at Tom Steele Tire, where it's all about saving you money. For over 35 years, this family-owned business has been saving Fort Wayne drivers lots of Benjamins. Offering quality tires and ASC certified mechanical service for your car, and that includes an oil change and tire rotation special, all for just $24.95. Two convenient locations in Fort Wayne to serve you. 
Tom Steel Tire, not just a tire store, but a complete automotive center. And now back to the IHS AA football game of the week with Joe Parson on Fox Sports 1250, The Ticket. Joe Walburn with us tonight, and Joe, you've got to give some kudos to Gushin. They, Gushin, they were stung by that 29-yard touchdown run by Money Woods with one uh, 40 remaining in the half, and they come back, and they do get an answering field goal, 30-yarder from Tyler Brinson. So they found, a, you know, we've, we've had two pretty good drives here yeah. in the late part of this first half. They seem to have found their sea legs after that interception return for the touchdown. Or, um, excuse me, when Snyder got down to the end zone with that interception return to make it 21 nothing. all of a sudden it seemed like Goshen took a deep breath and started playing football. We've had a good game since. Hip and hammer uh, coming up to his 10-yard line, not expecting anything deep, and they don't get anything deep. Here's a catch made at the 29, a run by Money Woods left side, across the 30 to the 32, clock running down to five and a half seconds, so we'll just probably have one kneel down, and that will be the end of this first half. And looking around at other scores, Joe, Bishop Lewis 26, Yorktown nothing in the third quarter, Dwanger 23, New Haven nothing in the third quarter, Homestead 14, Carroll 13 in the third quarter, so a dogfight out southwest for that sectional championship. Leo's a few touchdowns ahead of Southside. They'll probably play Dwanger next week. Um, kind of a bit of a surprise with me. In the third quarter, Belmont 24, Concordia 7, Concord and Northside are tied at 7 as they enter halftime. Stiebling just takes a knee, and that will do the first half. So, 28 unanswered points for the Panthers to start this ball game. But then Goshen strikes back with a touchdown to make it 28 to 7. Money Woods has had three rushing touchdowns in the first half, 35 to 7 until the 30-yard field goal by Tyler Brinson. And we're at halftime in this Class 5A sectional opener, 35-10. Our contest as the teams head to halftime. We're going to take a three-minute timeout, and then we'll be back. Don't forget, some uh, really neat things coming up at Jefferson Point beginning tomorrow with Trick or Treat, and uh, Katrina Newman will join us the other side of the timeout. We'll be back in three minutes, 35-10, Snyder, here at halftime. This is IHSW Tournament Football on Fox Sports 1250, the ticket. Hi, this is Russ Isaacs, former head football coach and athletic director at Snyder High School. I can tell you from personal experience that next to winning a championship, nothing compares to receiving a championship ring. The ring is a culmination of high achievement and adds tremendously to a student athlete's self-esteem. Take it from the coach. Honor your achieving student athlete with a championship ring from Signature Style Jewelry. Join the winner's circle. Get a free price quote and your artwork today. Call Todd Oliver at 800-273-8124, extension 3. That's 800-273-8124, extension 3. Write it down, 800-273-8124, extension 3. Or email them at Todd at SignatureStyleJewelry.com. That's Todd at SignatureStyleJewelry.com. Signature Style Jewelry, the leading online retailer of championship rings, class rings, and fashion jewelry. The game just isn't the game without you. When pain or injury has you sidelined, call Part D Sports Medicine at 260-266-4007. Whether you're an aspiring pro or a recreational athlete, our team of certified orthopedic surgeons, physical therapists, athletic trainers, and registered dietitian nutritionists will provide you with rapid access to comprehensive care and sports-specific rehabilitation. We can get you back to the action quickly and safely. Just call 260-266-4007. Part D Sports Medicine, your dream team. A trip to downtown Fort Wayne is not complete without a stop at Rudy's at 409 West Brackenridge. Next time you're headed to the baseball game, make three game plans to stop in at Rudy's, where you'll find a wide assortment of adult beverages and aromas. But Rudy's is also a premier downtown location for picking up those mouth-watering to brands chocolates. What better way to catch a game at Parkview Field? Make it a date for a stop at Rudy's, right across from the main Parkview Field entrance. Rudy, Rudy. That's the word you expect to hear when selling a home. And Rick Whitman from Century 21 Bradley can give you and your family the advice, expertise, and satisfaction to fit your needs when buying or selling a home. With Rick Whitman's nearly 40 years of can-do experience, you'll find an effective method to accomplish your goal, select the proper loan, and feel the comfort of your new home. When you think real estate, think Rick Whitman at Century 21 Bradley. Call 260-704-6565. Be sure to ask for Rick. 
Miss a great high school game recently? Or simply want to revisit that game-changing electric play that turned everything all around? Well, now there's a great new opportunity to do just that. Catch all the exciting action of our live radio broadcast simply by visiting SummitCitySports.com after our game broadcast. Plus, many other high school sports highlights to choose from as well. It's all new and available now at SummitCitySports.com. Let's get back to the stadium with more IHS AA football action and Joe Parson on Fox Sports 1250, The Ticket. It is halftime. Welcome back, everybody. Well, tis the season. We're getting close to it. Uh, glad you could join us here tonight for our high school football tournament presentation. Right now, uh, we want to talk to Katrina Newman, who's marketing manager at Jefferson Point Shopping Center. And as I opened up, Katrina, I mentioned tis the season. Well, it really starts tomorrow as we uh, talk here tonight. This is Friday night and, of course, uh, Halloween weekend uh, coming up and uh, starts 60 days of special days of uh, high holiday entertainment, special events going on at Jefferson Point. I want to talk about uh, tomorrow, especially with Halloween, and a great opportunity for the kids uh, to come out for a safe, uh, a fun environment here at Jefferson Point. And tell me what's going on. What do you have planned for trick-or-treating trick or on Halloween? It is exactly that, Joe. It is trick-or-treat at Jefferson Point. You mentioned it, a safe, fun environment. There's going to be all kinds of different stores that will have these pumpkin decals on their doors. That means they're passing out comic books. They're passing out candy. They're passing out little tchotchkes for the kids. Um, even pet lovers bring your pets out. Um, Petchen is going to be passing out some dog treats for your your pets. And the kids, oh, it's just so much fun. You've got to bring them out here for trick or treat. That is from 5 until 7 o'clock tomorrow night at Jefferson Point. And as far as the the pets, you want them dressed up, don't you, in of Halloween uh, costuming? Of course. Bring those pets out in their little costumes, and we've got little dog treats for the pets. Um, <laughs> there are about six stores that are going to be passing out treats for the pets, as well as a lot of stores passing out candy for the kids. Well, that's tomorrow. That's Saturday from 5 to 7 here at Jefferson Point. And let's transition now to November. And I know that then things get really wild and crazy, but in a good way. And uh, you have a very special event coming up on uh, Saturday, November the 14th, a Christmas tree lighting ceremony going on uh, in the main courtyard area here. And I was watching some of your videos. They are truly astounding. Uh, uh, tell us about that, because this is not just your average, your bearer uh, is not just your average Christmas tree. This is synchronized with lighting. The tallest in Fort Wayne yep. with synchronized music. Tell me about it. That is correct. It's almost 50 foot tall. It has a four foot star at the top that also synchronizes lights to music. Um, we have been doing this. This will be our fourth year this year. It has become a true family tradition. We see a lot of families come on out here. The tree synchronizes lights to music for Christmas, Christmas music leading up to Christmas, including the favorite, which is the Peanuts theme. And then after Christmas, we synchronize lights to music, party music to sync with um, the upcoming new year. So come on out. We have a fun, it's going to be a fun event on November 14th. That's only a couple weeks away. November 14th at 7 p.m. We will bring in Santa. We will bring his live reindeer in here um, from 5 until 7 o'clock. You can come on out and take pictures with live reindeer, meet Santa Claus, all free, fun for the entire family. And those funny little people from America's Got Talent, they will also be here. So it's a true fun event. Well, you've got uh, music, lights, Santa. Uh, what could, what more could you ask for? And, and let's talk about the special shows then beginning on the 15th uh, from 6 to 10 p.m. that go on the half hours. And again, I was watching the, the drama, the buildup of uh, some of these half hour shows. Truly spectacular. Yes, so after we light the tree, the tree will uh, continue to synchronize every half hour from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through uh, Sunday. Um, come on out here and enjoy the shows. There are three different shows, so if you miss it one time, you'll, you're guaranteed to hit it the next time. Um, they last about eight minutes long, and like I said, the synchronization is, is truly spectacular. None other like anything else you've ever seen in Fort Wayne. And in, in fact, we're pretty proud of this. This is probably the only Christmas tree in the Midwest that you're going to be able to see that synchronized lights to music this tall and this dramatic. So 
it's we're very proud of it. You know, for people who are familiar with Chicago, and I mean this, it kind of reminds me of Water Tower and all the things they do in the downtown loop area of Chicago, and it uh, it is really a, a spectacular event. Yeah, and and we've put a lot of time and effort into picking out the different songs, um, the programming of the tree. There's over 500 strobes that are in the tree. We have over 100 LED spheres. Everything is um, LED, so we're not using a ton of electricity. Um, but the different colors and the different um, shades of reds, purples, greens, it's, it's truly magnificent. We put a lot of time into it. It takes us, uh, we begin preparation for the tree way back in July. So we work on this for almost six months. Um, so it's a lot of hard work and, and we just cannot wait until November 14th to light the tree. Well that's November. Let's talk about December because now we're really getting into the season and I know on December the 5th you've got a special event coming up beginning at 9 a.m. Cookies and milk, but hey, you you got to have a reservation, right? You do, because this does sell out every year. November 5th, as you mentioned, Cookies and Milk with Santa. It begins at 9 o'clock. There are different sessions. Uh, you'll need to call the mall office. Um, not quite right now. We're not taking reservations yet, but give us a, a couple weeks after we light the tree, and then we'll start taking those reservations. But mark that on your calendar. December 5th, Cookies and Milk with Santa. It's absolutely free. Let's pass along that website uh, address, too. It's uh, jeffersonpoint.com. Because you can, well, I'll let you give the official one. Let me give it. It's jeffersonshopping.com. And um, on our website, you're going to find all the events. You'll also see on our Facebook page some video that we're going to be posting about the tree, about the reindeer, about Santa Claus. I mean, this is the place you want to be come Christmas time. It's always beautiful. It's always lit up. It's safe. And you can create so many memories with your family and friends at Jefferson Point. Well, that's December the 5th, and now December the 12th, you got a chance for maybe mom and dad get a very special uh, a gift if you're really, really lucky. Tell us, tell us about that. We give away a brand new car with Summit City Chevrolet, or you could choose the car or a $10,000 Jefferson Point shopping spree. Now, this is not a lease. A lot of people think, oh, there's a catch. There absolutely is not. You can win a brand new car, folks, or you could pick the $10,000 shopping spree. We're going to be giving that away on December 12th. All all the details, as I mentioned before, will be on our website, jeffersonshopping.com. December also time, and my wife reminds me, Star Wars is coming out, and that, what, that is going to be something else. Carmike's got some great plans for that. Oh my goodness, Star Wars. Let me just tell you, there's been over 1,600 tickets already sold for Star Wars here at Jefferson Point. I mean, they are preparing for 10,000 people a day. That is an enormous amount of people. So if you don't have your tickets for Star Wars yet, you're going to want to get your tickets. Um, the first showing is going to be December 17th. I believe that's already sold out. Uh, you might There might be one or two seats left for that. But the opening weekend, December 18th, 19th, 20th, and, and then beyond, four weeks beyond, it's going to be really hard to get a ticket. So make sure you get your tickets for Star Wars now at Jefferson Point Carmike. We've been talking to Katrina Newman, marketing manager of Jefferson Point. Always something special happening at Jefferson Point. More than a shopping destination, it's a shopping experience. Now back to more of our high school football halftime right here on Fox Sports 1250, The Ticket. Just before kickoff, let's uh, check in with head coach Kyle. Great play area. I'm envisioning something really spectacular, something over the top. Let's draw up some plans. Yes, JP. Right away, JP. Excellent idea. Bold move, JP. We'll get right on it. I see a large fort with a giant cannon to slide down. Let's make it historic. Tie it in with the history of Fort Wayne. And we gotta have it soft so kids of all ages can play. Let's have those blueprints on my desk by Monday morning. Jefferson Point and Lutheran Children's Hospital ER presents Fort Wayne's largest indoor soft play area. Parents can relax while the kids explore a fort, slide down a cannon, and crawl through the 16-foot cherry blossom tree. Over 2,000 square feet of indoor play area, the largest retail play area in the state of Indiana. Bring the kids and enjoy the fun at Jefferson Point. For details, go to jeffersonshopping.com. There's so much to see. It's where you want to be. Jefferson Point, Jefferson Point. And now back to the IHS AA football game of the week with Joe Parson on Fox Sports 1250, The Ticket. A lot of things going on at Jefferson Point. Uh, Katrina Newman appreciated the interview, the visit with her. And, of course, it all kicks off with uh, Halloween from 5 to 7 tomorrow at uh, Jefferson Point. A lot of treats for the kids. 
and all through the holidays upcoming and Star Trek coming in December as well. Let's take a look at the line score of the ball game. Uh, Snyder jumped out 21-0 lead here at the end of the first quarter over uh, the visiting Goshen Redskins. All started on a, a one-yard touchdown run by Dominic Scott. That was a the touchdown was set up by a pass by Bramley to the one-yard line. And uh, at the 8-11 mark, uh, Bozeman added the extra point to make it 7 to nothing. Then after a fourth down stop, Snyder took over the ball at their own 34. That would lead to a 24-yard touchdown run by Money Woods, the first of three rushing touchdowns here tonight. And at the 245 mark, 14 nothing Panthers. Brelsford with an interception. They would take over at the Goshen five-yard line. One play later, Dominic Scott scampered into the end zone at the 49.8 second mark. 21-0 Panthers. Money Woods would add his second touchdown of the ball game, breaking tackles, 28-yard touchdown run at the 8.53 mark of the second quarter, 28-0 in favor of the Panthers. An interception by Knight Narasson uh, gave Snyder possession at their own 29, but uh, they couldn't move the ball. They were stopped by the Goshen defense at their own 44. That would lead to a 7-yard touchdown run by Dylan Back at the 2.02 mark, 28-7. Goshen with their first touchdown of the night. But uh, Money Woods would answer with 110 remaining in the first half. He scored from 29 yards out to make it 35 7. Boosman and perfect on extra points here tonight. But with just 10 seconds remaining, a 30 yard field goal by Tyler Brinson would score the last point of the first half to make it 35 10 in favor of Snyder going to the halftime dressing room. Panthers are out there with their halftime. Warm-ups already, and we wait for Goshen to check back into the game. And let's go down and check in now with uh, Kurt Tipman and Joe Walbert. For Goshen running the football. Yeah, and the offensive line did a good job opening up some holes, and uh, Money and Dom are hard to tackle. Yeah, big time. Defensively, you guys got off to a great start, forced the turnovers. It seemed like Goshen kind of finally settled in and ran the football a little bit. What was the adjustments on the chalkboard at halftime against that, Coach? Well, it's just, I think, more than anything, our focus, you know, losing a little bit of focus towards the end of the half, and um, we did a good job there the uh, last series, except for, you know, a personal foul. It gave them some good field position, so we'll get it fixed. Yep, and lastly, how much fun is it to come out here and coach these playoff games? I mean, you know, you're starting to really put your fingerprints in the program with your tradition now. How much fun is it on Friday night to come out here in October and coach these playoff games? Well, it's a beautiful night, and um, it's it's great working with our kids. You know, you get to know the kids over the course of four years and watch them have some success, and you know, get ready for what we hope is a long playoff run. And you know, it's a it's a it's fun to work with them and a privilege to be a part of this program. Thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. And, Joe, a coach with such a great one-loss record, Coach Tittman, but you can hear the excitement. He enjoys coming out here on Friday nights and coaching these kids. No question about it. Makes it really worthwhile. And a 35-10 ball game, a 25-point lead for the Panthers. That uh, adds to the fun and excitement from a Snyder standpoint as well. Let's take a three-minute timeout. We'll be back with the start of the second half. It'll be Snyder getting the ball first when we return. This is IHSAA Tournament Football on Fox Sports 1250, the ticket. You're a super fan who will tailgate anywhere. The pros, check. College, check. Your eight-year-old peewee game, big time. And to prepare for this ritual, you head to Meyer for freshly prepared food and licensed team apparel. Proudly display allegiance to your favorite team with our licensed short and long sleeve tees, hoodies, hats, and jerseys. Plus, load up on fresh meats, snacks, and drinks. So don't just tailgate, tail greater at Meyer. Brought to you by Meyer. Meyer is proud to support IHSAA football. Did you know the IRS tax code now consists of nearly 80,000 pages of rules and regulations? It's enough to make you cry. But now there's real affordable help right here in Fort Wayne. Walbert Financial Management, a firm that cuts right through the legalese, working hard for you, providing external solutions to bookkeeping and tax problems. Walbert Financial Management, taking flawless care of all your personal reporting, P&L, or even individual tax requirements. Give them a call, 260-459-2240. You'll sleep better at night being assured everything's taken care of. Walbert Financial Management. Where do savvy sports fans in the Summit City go when they need to know more than just the score? It's an easy choice. 
No other media outlet covers the local sports scene like the Journal Gazette. You get seven days sideline coverage from the area's most experienced and knowledgeable sports staff. It's a commitment to Fort Wayne that the Journal Gazette takes very seriously. When you need to know the story behind the story, nobody delivers the goods each morning like the Journal Gazette. And even when you're on the go, you can still catch up on the latest sports news online at www.journalgazette.net or from your mobile device at www.jgmobile.net. Start your sports day right every day, seven days a week with the Journal Gazette. Every day, Fast Science helps businesses like yours with their visual communications. We ask the right questions, recommend smart solutions, and help you build your business. Our knowledgeable consultants uncover your communication challenges and provide visible solutions. At Fast Science, we're innovators, planners, and designers. We're more than fast, more than science, and we're more than ready to help. Contact Fast Science today. Text the word Fast Science to 90407 to receive sales and discounts. Trust the doctors at the IPFW Athletics and the Fort Wayne Comets Trust. Aaron Chiropractic is well known for providing quality yet cost-effective care for sports injuries, muscle, or joint problems. They're one of the only clinics in the region to provide its patients with pain relief utilizing numerous therapies including acupuncture, massage, and rehabilitation. Aaron Chiropractic is conveniently located in northeast Fort Wayne. Find us on the web at AaronCairo.com or call 492-8811 to schedule an appointment. Before me is no ordinary potato. It is a potato among potatoes. A flavorful spud naturally grown and lovingly harvested for one special purpose, to become McDonald's world-famous fries. Now for $2.50, get small fries paired with a double cheeseburger, a filet of fish sandwich, a crispy or grilled chicken ranch snack wrap, or a six-piece chicken McNuggets. Choose one of your favorite fries with that combos for just $2.50 today at McDonald's. Limited time only. Prices and participation may vary. You're listening to the high school football game of the week on WGL for Wayne, Fox Sports 1250, The Ticket. Welcome back, everybody, with Joel Auburn. We get ready to start the second half. This game uh, kicked off at 7.30 because of Goshen coming in from some distance. 35-10 is where we stand. Joe, and I know you got some updates. Yeah, got some scores in the third quarter. It's Lures 26, Yorktown nothing. Heading into the fourth, Bishop Dwanger 23, New Haven 6. So New Haven finally gets on the scoreboard. Other scores... Does Carroll have another comeback in them? Homestead had them down 28 to 13. It's now 28 to 20 as we head to the fourth quarter. Leo Big over South, Belmont 38, Concordia 7, and a final. Woodland comes back 14 to 13 over East Side. Wow. Here comes the kick now. Goshen short far side. Running up, Hippenhammer's got it at the 25-yard line and angles to his left and uh, brings it across the 30 to about the 33-yard line. So here come the Panthers now, opening drive to begin this second half. They took a 21-0 lead at uh, the end of the first quarter, built it out 28-0, and uh, right now it's 35-10. Yeah, very impressive first half and physical for Snyder. And you got that with the interview with Coach Tippman. He was extremely relaxed, and I tell you what, heads up for Joe Parson getting that interview after half because that's as relaxed as I've ever seen <laughs> him. But I think he's comfortable because he likes – the way his team has played in the first half, and he likes the aggressiveness, Joe. So it'll be interesting if they can duplicate that here in the second half and if Goshen can possibly make a run. David Nackerson checks in now as one of the wideouts to the left side. Here's a quarterback keeper play, Stiebling. Now, no, it's a direct snap, and that's a Hippenhammer who angles to his right. The old Wildcat run by Hippenhammer across the 40 up to about the 43. Let's see if he's got a first down. And surprised us, snuck in the game. We didn't even see that, so they come out starting the second half with the Wildcat, and... He's I'm, staying I'm, in there. I'm, yeah, I'm looking around, seeing if I can see Stiebling. I didn't, I didn't see any injury or anything with Stiebling. I think maybe it's like the idea of being so physical and running that ball in the first half. But I'm, I'm looking around the side. Yeah, I see Stiebling right there. There's nothing wrong with him. He's just waiting to go in the game, Joe. But a little wildcat action. So they keep a hip and hammer in the ball game. Hands it up. No, he keeps it himself. Running to the left side. Does not find well. Trying to push the pile, but uh, is going to be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. And I think that experiment's going to end. Yeah. Yep. Start to the half physical football. So here comes Stiebling. And they're going to get back in the, probably get back now and throw the football down the field. 
It will be second down and 10. Snyder with the opening possession to begin the second half, leading it 35 to 10. Here comes They've, the full back in the eye formation, Joe. They're going to go back to that straight eye formation with Stroud, the up back in the eye. Hippenhammer stays in, but wide to the right side. Stiebling under center now to take the snap. From the left side, hash mark looks deep, hands it off now. And here's a run by Dominic Scott in noses over the 45 to about the 47. That'll bring up a third down call. They've got to get to the 47 of Goshen on this snap. Yeah, and Snyder can give you so many different looks. They can come out and run the spread offense. You know, they can give you, you know, the power eye. And now I expect here on third down, maybe a little bit of play action. And keep your eye on the tight end this time, coming across the middle or down to the flat. So again, same set with the Straight eye, play action fake. Here's a little dump pass near side. You called it, Joe. Well, there's Stroud out of the backfield. And the big fella inside the 40 down to the 37. He's got a first down. Yeah, and they had the tight end and the fullback on the play action. And that's a traditional play that Snyder's run since all the way back when Rod Woodson was here. They love to run the play action out of the power eye and drag that tight end back across backside, and that was wide open. And execution again for Stiebling to put the football out there. And Joe, that tight end is a freshman. 6'5", Simon Dellinger. The Dellingers have... They, they've had a career happening with their family tight ends at Snyder. Yeah. <laughs> Blessed them with another one, huh? 6'5", freshman. Wait till they get him in the weight room and fill him out. But, yeah, he's a big, imposing kid. And I'll tell you, all the games we've done this year, Joe, whenever we go down and watch the warm-ups with Snyder, they just look extra big and everything we've seen. And, you know, I'm 6'4", 225, <laughs> and I'm looking at these kids thinking, these kids are huge. It's one of the bigger high school teams that we, we've seen this year. First and ten. I think the officials were talking about a possibility of a penalty. Here, play action fake here. Stiebling over the middle has got a white. Uh, Bramley had it on his right hand. A little bit high that time delivered, but incomplete. He could not hold on. Yeah, and Bramley's got to get those hands up because I think that time, you know, he had Bramley on the split post. I think Bramley was a little bit surprised how fast that ball got there. I mean, Stiebling's arm strength, Believe it or not, is a little bit underrated. I think he throws a heck of a fastball. Hippenhammer split wide to the left side. Up on the slot to the left side is David Turner. Out of the pistol now, and they'll hand the ball off. Scott, Scott trying to angle to his left and just slips down. He only gets to the 35-yard line, picks up about a yard, a yard and a half. So still third down and long. They're going to spot that ball just outside the Goshen 35. And the linebacker that time for Goshen, Alex Lear, you know, comes up, fills, scrapes, and makes the tackle. So good defense with Goshen. And that's what you got to do. You got to get outside. You got to keep that outside arm free and keep that contained with those Snyder backs. Penalty against Snyder. So it's going to be third down at about nine, but uh, looks like the Redskins are going to accept the penalty. It'll remain second down. Second down with a ball moving back to the 45-yard line. Remember, catch video highlights and game replays anytime at SummitCitySports.com. Most weekends, you'll have uh, three game replays to view, plus uh, archived highlights and player interviews. And you'll be able to see this game uh, sometime tomorrow afternoon. Here's a roll to the right side by Stiebling. Throws on the run, and between receivers, completes it to David Turner at the 35-yard line. And I thought Goshen was going to get that football that time. They had double coverage, and Stiebling still chose to force that ball in there, and he muscles that football to Turner. And how about Turner's hands, Joe, to be able to reach out and snatch that ball between those Goshen defenders? That's confidence, Joe, getting that ball in there and uh, arm strength as you talk about. Now he'll roll to the left side, wanting to throw again. Needs nine yards. He's got an open receiver, and that's Hippenhammer. Runs a little score out pattern far side at the 23. It'll be first and 10 for the Snyder Panthers. And when I've seen Stiebling, I've been so impressed. That time he rolls to the left, lines his shoulders up, and just flicks that football out there. He's an extremely skilled player. He's going to play his football next year at Eastern Michigan. Eastern Michigan got a heck of a steal to get this kid, Joe. Freshman Simon Dellinger is in there. He's tight to the right side. 210 pounds, and now they run the ball looking for a hole. That Scott pushes everybody inside the 20. Still driving. Got to about the 17. They may mark him down just uh, inside the, or just outside the 17-yard line. Yeah. He'll gain five. 
a good push with Snyder pushing that ball down the field and you begin to see a lot of those grass stains of mud on the back of the Goshen defensive players. And that's the way you check your team, how you did at the bus when you go home. If you're a defensive lineman, you want those grass stains of muds on the front of your jersey. Hill, they'll run the ball off tackle of the right side. Scott's into the second level inside the 10 to the 5, and he'll score. 18-yard touchdown run, and now both Dominic Scott and Money Woods have got three rushing touchdowns apiece. Impressive. Drops the pads, just bouncing off defenders as he runs downhill and motors into the end zone for another touchdown. Time of the score, 827. And that's the that's the that's the backbreaker right there. I don't think Goshen's gonna come back and make a game of it now, Joe. That was too physical and that was too deflating that touchdown for them. Six rushing touchdowns tonight by Snyder. Now Boozman on to attempt the extra point. Right-footed kick is on the way. End over end, and it is good. So add one to the Snyder total, 42-10. Their lead is 32 here at home. And this is IHSW Tournament Football on Fox Sports, 1250 the ticket. Hi, Charlie Mopter here from Mopter Insulation. It's never too late to add insulation. You'll be amazed at the results from our Mopter professionals retrofit your walls and attics with high quality insulation. When we're finished, you'll stay warmer and hopefully save money on your heating bills as well. Momper, number one name in insulation since 1950. Call today at 432-7543. Let's get back to the stadium with more IHS AA football action and Joe Parson on Fox Sports 1250, the ticket. 42-10 our score here early on in the second half. Snyder, uh, if they go on to win this ball game, they would host Northside if Northside wins that ball game or they would go to Concord. Concord next to Friday night. As far as Goshen, if they should uh, rally in this one, they would be home either way against the Concord North winner. And last score we had, Joe, in that um, Concord Northside game was 7-7 late in the third. So, you know, here Redskins comes Northside. We thought Northside was dead with all the injuries three, four weeks ago, and they're battling back. Kick uh, near side, fielded inside the five at the four. Right side run, and that will be across the 15 to about the 19-yard line. As Tyler Glasgow that time with the uh, kickoff return. He had been averaging about uh, 10 yards a kick return, had a long of 19 coming into the tonight's ball game. It'll be first and 10 for the Redskins moving from right to left. Their first possession to start this second half. And speaking of possessions, a very impressive drive, opening drive by the Snyder Panthers to start this second half. Yeah, very physical. You got a little bit of the pass game, but you also got the run game. So a great start to the second half for Snyder. And now we'll see what Goshen can do. Here's Dentweiler with two wide to the left side, wants to hand it off, and boy, that is nothing there. That time, uh, they did not get out of the chutes, and Zach McDowell, among others, was there to stop it for a loss of about two. Yeah, Snyder slanted that time, and they, 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 they chose correctly. They slanted right to the run play that time, so nothing there for Concord. Excuse me, nothing there for Goshen. I got my mind on Concord. And speaking of Concord, Concord has just scored to go ahead of Northside 14 to seven. So, so good matchup over there, but we'll be interested to see here if Goshen get the ball down the field, Joe. Second down at 11, Jeff Stoll's flanked to the left side, and here's a roll that side, and here's a catch made on a little rollout pass, and that was Corbin Harrison, as uh, they'll mark him uh, with the catch up around the 25 yard line. So that'll be a pickup of about uh, four or five yards. Yeah, good play that time. Harrison coming back to the football to make himself available. So nice job that time to get a positive play for um, Ghost. Another update for you, Joe. Here comes Carroll. It's 28-26 Homestead in the fourth quarter. So, wow, another big shootout out there. I wonder if they tried for two then and failed on it. So still a two-point ball game. Here's a ball that was off the right hand of Detweiler, but the penalty flag and the whistles blew right at the snap and it's procedure against the Redskins that'll back up. It was third and five. It'll be third down and ten. And those are the, the, the penalties that absolutely kill you. You just cannot make those mistakes because now you're back to playing behind the chains on third down. They don't have the high-powered offense to do that. So Homestead just scored again, Joe. So Homestead answers the Carroll score 
35-26 late in the fourth Homestead in that sectional championship game. That makes it a two-score lead, yeah. two-possession lead as well. Here's Dedwire out of the gun. High snap, but he bobbles it and is buried. That one cost him some time, and it came pouring through there, and he'll be sacked back around the 10-yard line. William Johnson, the six-foot-one, 190-pound junior defensive end, just comes on the blitz. Untouched, and Joe. Untouched, and Detweiler never had a chance. He was lucky to get that football back, and, you know, big stop for Snyder. So forces Goshen to punt, so you're probably going to get a big dose of the Snyder run game now. Connor Glick will come in to punt the ball away. It'll be fourth down and 19. He's two yards deep in the end zone. Waiting for the snap. Needs a good one. Two back and punt return. High ball. Got it way. End over end. It's a... Here's Hippenhammer, lets it bounce one time and now sees it go out of bounds at about the 37 yard line of the Redskins. So obviously uh, Snyder's gonna have very good field position. Yeah, good field position. Now a chance to really run the ball and take some time off the clock. So, you know, winning that toss and deferring that football to the third quarter seems to always work out well. Six rushing touchdowns. It's been a long time, yeah. really, hasn't yeah. it? Uh, it has been. Three each for Money Woods and Dominic Scott. They're almost in like a mini contest. Uh, yeah, who's going to get the next one, huh? <laughs> well, they got Money back in there, so Hippenhammer stays in. He's wide to the left. That's the short side of the field. Stabling out of the pistol, waiting for the uh, handoff. And does give the, no, he screens the ball to David Turner. Got a block, 30-25. Spun around, but he'll... Gets it down to about the 25-yard line, so they fake the handoff to Money Woods and the quick bubble screen near side to David Turner. And I like Stiebling on those bubble screens because his arm is so strong. He gets the ball out there so fast, Joe, and that's such an advantage in those bubble screens if you can get that football to your receiver that quickly. Freshman Dellinger is in there again, tight to the right side. Hard count by Stiebling, nearly drew Goshen off sides. First down and 10 at the 540 mark. Now they might be changing the play call as Stiebling looks and wants to throw the ball. He's got a screen left side. And that's Hippenhammer lost the ball. But two Panthers were there. And let's see if Goshen, though, got the ball back. Goshen got it. And it looked like the ball hit Hippenhammer, Joe, in the chest. And he was trying to put it away. And Goshen got to him so fast that he lost that football. So I think that's going to be, I think that could possibly be an interception, Joe. No indication, really, from the officials. That Goshen the has the ball. I mean, he, I mean, I don't think that ball hit the ground. Maybe it's a discussion if whether whether he had control. It's going to be officials' timeout, and it is a recovery by Goshen, whether it was the interception or a fumble recovery. So the first turnover of the night that favors Goshen, they were picked twice in the first half. Yeah, I think that was an interception, Joe. So it will be Goshen's ball first and 10 at their own 22-yard line. Well, a break for Goshen. We'll see if they can get some yards here and get some points on the board. Still 527 remaining, and here come the Redskins up to the line of scrimmage. Corbin Harrison will be sent wide to the right side, and Colton Potter wide to the left. And let's see, they want to run the ball off to the right side, and boy, Snyder stiffening defensively once again, right back to the line of scrimmage, and that is about you're it. Way, yeah, and you got to move a little faster if you're Goshen, you know. Obviously, it's a tremendous deficit to, to get back in the game, but but you got to move a little faster to get in and get out of the huddle. Ran right into the arms of Lawrence Johnson, the 275-pound sophomore defensive tackle. Gain of one, second down and nine. Stoll stays in as the running back. Corners come up and press coverage now for Snyder on this second and long. Here's the option pitch comes right side. And uh, not much there. Maybe a gain of a couple of yards. Late pitch by Detweiler to Stoll on the running back. And it'll be third down and still about seven. Nice discipline with Snyder to have the defensive end take the quarterback and that corner come up and get pitch man. So they played the option perfectly. You know, Goshen's kind of probing for looking for something to do against Snyder, and that time Snyder's prepared for that option game. Yeah, Marcus Green, a big defensive end, played it well for the Panthers. Third down and long. Now a three-wide package to the left side, the wide side of the field. 
Deadweiler kind of looks that way, has the snap. Now looking to set up a screen. He's got Harrison, and boy, he has lost his footing as he was nailed by Isaiah Knight Narasson for a loss, and that'll bring up fourth down and eight, and they'll have to kick the ball away. And you can't run the screen game if you can't throw the ball down the field. You know, you can call a bubble screen, but they're not going to respect that bubble screen if you don't throw, if you're not a threat to throw the ball down the field. So Snyder's selling out on that screen game right now. Clock is moving at 343 remaining in the third quarter. Connor Glick waits for the snap inside the 10 at the 9. High snap, but he snatches it. Right footed kick is away. And let's see if and the penalty flag is thrown. I believe that they get him, did not. Here's a return by Snyder inside the 20 yard line. They're gonna score, but I don't think it's gonna stand up. That would be a touchdown by Hippenhammer on about a 25, 27 yard punt return for a touchdown. But let's see, I think it's gonna be kick running into the kicker at least. Yeah, it's definitely, it's, it's, it's definitely roughing, the, roughing the kicker on the back side, I think you're gonna have some type of clip, but I think you just had a personal foul on Goshen, so now they gotta sort the whole thing out. It was roughing the kicker by about three Panthers. Hippenhammer runs the ball all the way back, breaking three tackles. It's funny because he jumps over the flag on the way to the end zone, so he sees the flag as he runs the ball back to the end zone. That was a clue, right? I think you're gonna have offsetting penalties here and probably have to kick the ball again. So you've got, you've got, I think they initially, both the first two flags were on Snyder, but I think the last one's going to be on Goshen. Teams have gone to the respective benches while the officials confer, trying to, try to sort this Figure one this out. thing out. So I think they're going to end up probably kicking this ball again, Joe. That was a heck of a run back by Hippenhammer. Yeah. This kind of reminds me, I don't know if you've seen the commercial that's on TV where the officials... Are, are talking, they missed the call, and they're talking about the alibiing for it. Yeah. And, and then somebody yells, your mic is on. Yeah. <laughs> we don't usually have that at the high school level. I'm no, waiting for that don't. at the college level, though. What's interesting on the high school level this year, though, for the first year is they're using um, headsets. You know, they all have the ability to communicate with each other. So that's kind of interesting. Every crew I've talked to, some like it, some don't. It, you know, I mean... You still get chummy, Joe. I mean, they're <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and the conversation goes on. By the way, it's Chad Gibson, our head referee tonight. I'm going to take a little bit to sort this out. I'm pretty obviously we saw the roughing the punter. That's a personal foul. The last one, the second one, I was wondering. It looked like possibly a clip or a hold when Hippenhammer reversed field. So I'm not sure what's taking so long on this. I think maybe they're trying to figure out. You know, where do you spot the ball after all of this? Well, we're heading in 9.30. We're going to be here a while longer in this game that started late. Obviously, a 7.30 kickoff, not 7 o'clock, to try to benefit the Goshen crowd coming down. I think, what, I think what you ultimately have is roughing the punter should be a first down for Goshen. Um, the illegal block in the back of the clip should be declined. And then you have then you have the 15-yard personal foul penalty that should then be assessed back against Goshen. Personal foul against Goshen was the second call, and unsportsmanlike against uh, Goshen. There were two fouls against two of them. Uh, okay. Redskins. So there was no clip. So, so now the question is, do you assess the roughing the the, the punter and then assess both personal fouls? So there, that's the interesting part. There was no clip. Snyder sending their defensive unit out, so, so they're expecting Goshen to have the ball, but where? In the personal fouls, Goshen was a hit, must have been a hit behind the play, and I saw a Goshen player jawing with the officials, so that must have been the second one. Well, Kurt Tippin's getting an explanation. He's about out to the hash mark, or halfway to the hash mark, looking. I think because, and I could be wrong, I think you enforce roughing the punter, but then the ball changed possession, and I think you come back and enforce the personal yeah. fouls. So. Yeah, I think it's Goshen's ball. It's just Correct. a question of where. I think it's Goshen's ball, but I think it's their ball over there in Huntertown. I think it's. I think after you assess the 30 yards. Yeah, over at Smith Field, right? Yeah, it's over at Smith Field. That's even better, huh? <laughs> so that's what they're trying to figure out now. Where do we spot the football? Well, they're they're huddled up again, the officials and yeah. stripes. So they still not they've given us an indication, but I think trying to figure out where the ball will be is now the next uh, next process. 
Okay, we've got that. Chad Gibson said it was roughing the kicker. On Snyder. Correct. Personal then foul. Personal foul, Goshen. Dead ball, personal foul. On Sportsman Link. Oh, on Sportsman against Snyder. Snyder. So now you have offsetting. Okay. Offsetting, it's Goshen's ball, offsetting personal fouls. Well, he changed that because he. Changed it, yeah. And Kurt Timbin <laughs> still would like to get an explanation. You know, who did what, when, and why? Well, Kurt's not real happy. He's got that right hand and left hand kind of. I don't think. Think, and boy, they're going to bring the ball all the way up, Joe, to about the 38-yard line of Goshen. So now, they'll come out of this with very good field position. That doesn't make any sense because it should have been. Well, then they're going to bring. They should bring it back 15 more yards. They should go back the other way, Joe. Now they're putting the ball down. You got time to change it, Kyle. Get his attention. You got wrong, on the wrong hash. Wow. So that was a 30-yard 30, 30 penalty on Snyder. Well, now, that's, that's, I mean, roughing the penalty, yes. But if there was offsetting personal fouls, oh, well. Well, we'll move on. It's 42 to 10, right? So at some point, we got to have a little clarity, don't we? <laughs> One would hope. <laughs> One would hope. <laughs> uh, All right. So the Redskins hold on to the football, and uh, they had four at the nine. They end up getting the ball at their own 38-yard line, two wide to the right. Deadweather again, high snap. Looks, loads up, throws, and that ball is... Incomplete. Well, that was uh, trouble then intended for Colton Potter. Yeah, he tried to muscle it in there to Colton Potter, but Potter's got to get his head around and get ready for that football. And Detweiler had some problems because the center defensive end was right in his face. And I'm going to tell you from experience, it's really difficult to throw the football when you have that pass rush up the middle. It's easier to find your lanes and throw through the open spaces. And by the way, Janari Brown was right there in the vicinity where that pass was coming. Second down and 10. Rolled to the right, Detweiler. Wire. Looks, looks, throws on the run, and that one short hopped to nowhere. Intended for Potter, perhaps. They had a couple of players crossing pattern. Harrison was there, but now it's third down and ten. Yeah, his receiver fell down that time, so Detweiler had no place to go with the football. Been a weird year for Goshen. They won their first fall, first four ball games, Joe. They had to be feeling, wow, after 0-10, now four straight wins, but then they dropped four straight. Came back with a win two weeks ago against Wallace, their first shot out of the victory. Now they went a run and stole to the right side, and he gets only to about the 40-yard line. So that'll bring up fourth down and nine once again. And Glick, we would expect, will come in, or will he, with the improving field position of the 40, down 32 points. They may decide to go for it. Yeah, might as well here. Why not? And you're right, Joe. They went, they went 4-0, and they lost that heartbreaker to Concord, 24-20. And it just seemed to take so much steam out of them. And coaches say when you lose a game, don't let that team beat you twice. Well, Concord beat them one, two, three, four times because after that, they just did not have a good game against Warsaw, then got beat by a good Northridge and Plymouth team. So that Concord loss really hurt them. Glick at the 25, good snap, kick is away, high, end over in, hip and hammer trying to locate it, can't find it, and it bounds out of bounds inside the Snyder 25-yard line. So Mac Hippenhammer kind of lost the ability to track that ball and bounce, took a right turn out of bounds, so Snyder will get it back. Still with 2.21 remaining in the quarter, 42-10. And how about some updates, Joe Auburn? Yeah, we'll get some updates as some of these games are starting to go final. Final out in New Haven. Bishop Dwanger 37, New Haven 6. So impressive win for Dwanger. Um, into the fourth quarter over at Lewis Field, Bishop Lewis 33, Yorktown 7. A final out southwest, Homestead 35, Carroll 26. So they come back and the Spartans avenge that regular season loss. Now the Panthers want to run the ball up the middle. And they'll have a gain out just short of the 30 to the 29-yard line. And a final out in Grable, Leo 41, Southside 8. Ouch. And down Decatur, Belmont 38. Concordia seven. That's a final. That's a final. Over over at at at, at Northside's field, Chambers Field. Concord twenty one, Northside thirteen. Heading into the fourth quarter, and Woodland comes back down thirteen nothing to beat Eastside fourteen to thirteen. Money Woods hits the line of scrimmage, turns his back, and gets across the thirty to about the thirty three yard line, then driven back. 
Sets, that, up, sets up interesting matchups next week, Joe. That Concordia game, Belmont, that, that surprised me a little that bit. That surprised me, too. But I wonder, we did Concordia and Carroll. Do you, I think, I mean, you have to wonder how much Carroll took out of Concordia and maybe the whole season, Joe. Well, Curligrand did not play the second half. And uh, it, it, rumor was he was uh, banged up a little bit in that yeah, game. And maybe yeah. he was not full strength uh, coming into this one. Third down and two. Steveling rolling to the right. Buying time. Throws near side. That ball. Now they're going to rule it. Going up. Uh, that was uh, David Turner that grabbed the ball, but they uh, did not get a foot in bounds. Makes for great matchups next week, though. Belmont and Bishop Lures for the sectional championship. Bishop Dwanger and Leo for the sectional championship. What a great matchup this is. It's going to be Snyder here, and looks like right now possibly Concord. That game's still in doubt, Concord or Northside. And then Homestead will probably get Carmel next week, so some great matchups. Trent Morgan in to punt for the first time tonight. Waits back at his own 20-yard line. Good snap. Rush is coming. Kick is away. Had two punts last week along a 47, or should two weeks ago. Goshen lets it trickle on through inside the 20, still rolling down to the 16-yard line. So, uh, again, Trent Morgan, who averaged 42 and a half yards a punt two weeks ago against Southside here on this field, got the kind roll once again. <laughs> he sure did. So, as we head into the fourth quarter, we'll see if Goshen's going to put the ball up in the air. But it's interesting when you look around, Joe, you know, it was such a tough conference season, but, wow, Homestead got better. They got so much more confidence after beating Bishop Lewis. So you see Homestead, you see Snyder playing well, you see Dwanger playing well, Dwanger, Bishop just... Lewis. And so you begin to see these teams that are battle-tested and, and extremely impressive with the playoff runs. Yeah, Dwanger probably has been the biggest surprise. I mean, they've just gotten better and better every week. Deadweiler out of the gun again, wants to throw, looks right side and got the pass that's complete. Good to quick pass to the right side, waited for the receiver to clear, and that was Bechtel. Brady Bechtel came in with two catches last uh, two weeks ago, 21 on the year. That'll be a gain of about six, second down and four. We're in the final half minute of this third quarter, 42 to 10 in favor of the Panthers. They ran out to a 21-0 lead. They'll run Stoll off to the right side. He's got a first down and a chance. 40, 45, 50. Cuts back to the right side. Got a block. And Stoll finally wrapped up and dropped. He reached the Snyder 30-yard line as Todd Starks wrapped him up and uh, saved the touchdown at least for a moment. Wow, he looked fast too, Joe. And his impressive. best run of the night. Wow, impressive. I thought he was going to take that one to the house. We have not seen Ramil Johnson uh, much in the second half after he had some electrifying runs in the first, especially on kick returns. And he's only a junior too, Joe, 5'6", 150. But can he pick him up and put him down? John well, uh, Sanchez in wide to the left side. They want to throw the ball to him on the fade, looking, looking, and lays out for it, can't find the handle. Coverage was supplied that time by Demarius Ridley. So the incompletion stops the clock with still 3.7 seconds remaining in the quarter, and it's second and 10. They've got some good-looking juniors for Goshen. Still a very young ball club. Yeah. I think they're going to do some damage next year. I mean, they've got some good-looking juniors, and, and they held their own in that conference this year. There's no reason they can't go from five wins up to six or seven wins, and maybe even eight wins next year. Ubaldo's in as a tight end. He's tight to the right side, too wide to the left. Shotgun formation again for Dettenweiler. Play action fake. And stump. they did throw the ball. That's incomplete. Looking near side again, Colton Potter could not, had struggled with the footing. And it'll bring up third down and 10. And Detweiler is a junior too. So Detweiler is a junior. Ramel Johnson's a junior. Um, and their leading rusher, Stahl, is a junior, so young team. Three quarters into the books, 42-10 Snyder. And we'll be back for the fourth quarter. This is IHSAA Tournament Football on Fox Sports, 1250 the ticket. Satisfied with your bank? Have you considered a credit union? Midwest America offers about any service you need. The convenience of free mobile banking, debit cards, ATMs, free online banking and bill payer, competitive loans, mortgages, and more. Deposits insured to a half million dollars. Hey, consider this an invitation. Your next bank should be a credit union. 
Midwest America Federal Credit Union. Midwest America Federal Credit Union. The game just isn't the game without you. When pain or injury has you sidelined, call Parkview Sports Medicine at 260-266-4007. Whether you're an aspiring pro or a recreational athlete, our team of certified orthopedic surgeons, physical therapists, athletic trainers, and registered dietitian nutritionists will provide you with rapid access to comprehensive care and sports-specific rehabilitation. We can get you back to the action quickly and safely. Just call 260-266-4007. Parkview Sports Medicine, your dream team. And now back to the IHS AA football game of the week with Joe Parson on Fox Sports 1250, The Ticket. Jeff Stoll getting the handoff as we start the fourth quarter for the Redskins and angling to his right, but uh, does not find much of a hole. He gains only a yard and it's fourth down and nine. But it looks like Joe at the 29 yard line of the Panthers, they've got a, they're down 32 points. They're going to roll the dice. Yeah, you got to roll the dice. You got to put the ball in the air here and throw the ball downfield here. So Snyder is trying to stiffen to close out this game. And Goshen would like to keep this possession going. Snyder shows four defensive down linemen. Marcus Green defensive uh, end to the right. Deadweiler looking left, pump fake, now throws to the corner. Try to lay some air under it, and uh, with the ball is not caught. Covers that time by Todd Starks in the corner and incomplete, and uh, it'll bring up, well, it'll be Snyder getting the ball. There is a penalty yeah, flag. Yeah, they're going to call pass interference on Starks, Joe. It looked like pretty good coverage out there but they're going to call pass interference, so it's going to be a first down for Goshen and a fresh set of downs. So Snyder did not have a penalty in the first quarter, but they've been mounting up uh, here a little bit more. They're going to mark, actually, that ball off. It'll be a walk-off from the line of scrimmage back at the 30. It's not a spot foul. But it should give them the first down, take the ball down to the 20-yard line. And down to the 15, actually, with a 15-yard walk-off. So another scoring opportunity in the red zone are the Redskins. They'll work first and 10 from the right hash mark. They've had just one touchdown tonight, though, and a 30-yard field goal by Tyler Brinson. And they'll keep Jeff Stoll in as the running back, flanked to the left side of Clayton Detweiler. Blitz coming up the middle by Snyder. Here's an option run, and Detweiler nowhere to go. Wrapped up and dropped, and was that Marcus Green coming through there? Sure was. Marcus Green sheds the block and just drops Detweiler, and they had the reverse on of Detweiler. Could have gave that football up, Joe, but Green just got to him too fast. Loss of six back outside the 20 at the 21-yard line. Jordan Holly will check in. He's listed as a backup tight end, and he will set up tight to the right side. It'll be second down and 16. 10-32 remaining in the ball game. Pump fake again. Throw to the left side. A little crossing pattern on a drag route. That'll get to a gain down to about the 16-yard line. So they'll get five of those lost yards back. And it'll bring up third down at about 11. You know, and after the initial blast of the 21 points from Snyder, Goshen has been pretty competitive, Joe. Third down and 11. I see most of the front line guys for Snyder out there still playing. Obviously at Goshen, if they come up short, they will gamble on it. Colton Potter in wide to the right side. Detweiler looking, looking, throws the quick slant, diving for it. Let's see. There's another penalty flag, and that'll be another, uh, inter another uh, pass interference call against Snyder. I mean, possibly maybe holding on the defensive back, but I didn't see any pass interference on that one, Joe. Officials are talking. By the way, that ball was caught by Potter, laid out for it, and still waiting and see what uh, which way the, this call is going to go. We, we said Snyder, but uh, may go might, the other way. Yeah, might go the other way. It does go against Goshen. A little push off, Chad Gibson says so. So take away the gainer. Uh, I thought that was a no call myself. <laughs> oh my the coaches God. next to us aren't too oh Yeah, God. It's 42 to 10. A little perspective, eh? <laughs> Offensive pass interference against Goshen. So big walk off is going to take the ball back outside the 30 to the 31. That is a loss of down, 
I believe, as well. It's going to be third, and I think it's going to be third down and what, Joe, here? Maybe 26 Third down? and 26 at the 31. Third and Hunter Town. It does remain uh, third down. So they would have to get down to where? Around the five-yard line? With basically two downs to work with here. 10.04 on the clock. Stall the running back flank to the left. Detweiler pump fake again, throws the fade, and here's a ball incomplete. Yeah. Now that was, yeah, now that was, well, <laughs> contact? Oh! The contact, nope. yeah. And now late penalty flag coming in where? That came well after the play from the near sideline. He's going to flag Jordan. I don't know. I, I looked like it was a pump and go, Joe. Yep. And Snyder jumped the route and looked like it could have been holding initially on Snyder. They kind of got a hold of the receiver out there for Goshen. Um, obviously, the ball, ball wasn't completed. Everybody was pretty upset on Goshen's sideline. So I don't know what the late flag is, if it's a, if it's a unsportsmanlike for barking at the referees for Goshen or if they um, thought better of it and said, yeah, you guys are right. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Goshen. Goshen. Yeah. So, so that'll back him up from from the 31 yard line. Fourth and 41 now. Yep. Back outside. Well, it'll take the ball all the way to the 46 yard line. So it is fourth down and forever. Well, they're not taking any lip tonight, are they? You take a, you give a little lip, you're going to get a flag, huh? <laughs> oh man. It's a good play call because they had the pump and go on Joe and they had the receiver initially, so. And there was some contact. To yeah, there was. Game's really slowed down now, hasn't it, with the fourth, fourth quarter and some of the penalties. Snyder's got uh, D'Angelo Stroud as one of the deep backs. They're dropping four back. Cover four, if you will. Corner's playing well off, and now on fourth down, Kyle Park says, uh, we'll punt the ball away, at least to give you the look at punting the ball with Connor Glick back there at his own 40-yard line. Hip and Hammer and Turner are the punt returners inside, waiting inside the 20-yard line and backing up around the 15. 9.54 remaining. Game getting a little chippy now. Here comes the punt high, sky high. And fair catch and Hippenheimer fighting it in pack pedals and has got it at about the 12-yard line. Good punt. Boy, uh, Mac Hippenheimer had to uh, good hands fight that one off a little bit, but uh, Snyder will get the ball back still. 42-10 our score. Panthers coming in with an 8-1 and one record and trying to advance in tournament play next week. Trying to take a 9-1 and one record. Probably on the road somewhere. Maybe that's going to Concord. Yeah, last score, last score that we had in that was um, Concord was up 21 to 13 in that game. So if that score holds up, Snyder would be on the road. New numbers coming in. And Christian Covington will check in as a running back. He had nine carries against Southside for 30 yards and he'll get the call here. Runs up the middle, finds a little running room across the 15-yard line until about the 20, and now they blow the whistle, and they'll give them a spot of the ball up around the 50, uh, uh, the 21-yard line. So this is a nice chance for Snyder to get some second-team guys in the games and, and get some reps, and this is how you build your depth. The other thing, you know, we talk about a lot of the same names of good teams each year, Snyder, Dwanger, but think about it, Joe. They play so deep in the playoffs, all these second- and third-string kids get a lot of much-needed practice. Covington stays in. He dots the eye in the uh, straight eye formation, working right side and tripped up and dropped right about the 20 yard line. He's gonna lose a yard. So it was second down and about two. It's gonna be third down and uh, about three now. And Plymouth, Plymouth rolled DeKalb tonight too, Joe. 56 to 14. So Plymouth could be a real threat out there in that 4A sectional, Joe. David Nackerson in wide to the left side. Steve Ling still in there at quarterback under center and wants to throw the ball near side of that one's way high and long. A little square up pattern run by Nackerson, but no chance on that one. 
So fourth down and three, and we are going to see Trent Morgan on to punt the ball away. Yep, Snyder didn't take much time off the clock that time, threw the ball a little bit, so now they're going to punt the ball back to Goshen, and we'll see what Goshen does with the um, football here. But very workmanlike in the, in the second half for Snyder. Got this game under control, and it'll be interesting to see if they do get Concord, how they match up with Concord. Corbin Harrison back in punt return at his own 48-yard line. Morgan waits for the snap at his own five rushes. Coming, the kick is away. And did they get a piece of him? Penalty flag is thrown back there. Yeah. Ball is touched and down at the Goshen 47-yard line, but Panthers, and let's check on Morgan, kind of holding the right side of his face. That's but so dangerous when you're the punter back there. Because you're exposed. You're, oh, my gosh, are you exposed. So. He's getting off the field, and he appears to be okay. But, man, you know, something else to finish up with the playoff thought, Joe. Um, you look around at the 5A, it's not the way the 5A used to be. I mean, no more Carmel. No more, no more Hamilton Southeastern to worry about, you know. You don't have Merrillville or Penn up north. So it's a much different run in the 5A this year for Snyder. I was talking to one of the Snyder coaches before the game and we were talking about you know the going to the extra class and he was telling me you know you look at the difference between the 5A schools and the 6A if Penn for example has got 4,000 students Snyder's a big school but they've got 1,800 yeah so again they try to even that out the the lack of uh, disparity is in the smaller schools from 1A but to you, about 5A that sometimes there's a difference of 50 students but you know but 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 with all due respect, Snyder has 1,800 kids, but how many kids are out for football? You know what I mean? Yep. I mean, they've got to have some. They picked all Southside's kids, you know what I mean? So They've got to have some tool for comparison, yeah. and that, that's the way they do it, right or wrong. Yeah. I don't like it, Second, as, you, as, as you can tell. <laughs> you know? Tell me how you really feel. <laughs> A little opinion for you on Friday night, but I liked it the way it was. Big freshman, Dellinger stays in, tight to the left side. They'll run the ball again up the middle, and second effort to, with a gain to the 35. Is that Covington to the 36? Yeah. yeah. So they're going to stay with a young running back. Another uh, their talented running back. The sophomore goes 5'10", 175. What was interesting, too, is Cathedral's classified as 6A now, too, Joe. But that's because of their success, not because of their size. <laughs> They've been penalized. <laughs> they don't like the parochial schools winning everything. <laughs> Third oh, down and seven. Great. You could get me in trouble. <laughs> we better stop, huh? <laughs> Third and seven, straight uh, out formation again. Yes. Stabling under center, looking in to play action fake, rolls left, throws on the run. There's a fingertip catch. Stroud has got it for a first down at the 45-yard line. It's a good ball player, 6'2", 230. The junior, just kind of a dump truck they put back there, but he shows you some hands. Another kid that could play, you know, they could play in college, play some big-time balls, got the size, good hands, and a good blocker, too. Let's see. We may have a new quarterback in there now for the uh, Panthers. As we are down to 6.55 remaining, Hayden Jones, I believe, has checked into the game to... Uh, take the snaps and looking hands it off or did he uh, penalty flags right on the snap and usually when you get the new guys in yeah. sometimes they don't get all synchronized up and that's going to be procedure walk off a five against Snyder yeah. so Covington stays in as the running back Hayden Jones 5'9 sophomore not all that big also they list Justin Kopke as a uh, backup quarterback. He is a 6'3 sophomore. I have not seen him tonight. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see who takes over next year for Snyder, but how about Stiebling this year, though, Joe? Over 1,800 yards and 24 touchdown passes. Jalen Ellison is a wideout, and here's the ball being lost and uh, dropped on by the quarterback, so uh, Hayden Jones does pop on it. Clock continues to move with 6'19 remaining in this ball game. Well, Joe, I know you're thinking about trying to go down and maybe chat with uh, some of the Snyder players, and uh, it'd be interesting to talk to Money Woods and sure. maybe Dominic Scott and yeah. having a great night. Three rushing touchdowns apiece. Good two-headed monster in the backfield for Snyder. Here's play-action fake, and boy, <laughs> Aiden Jones won to throw the ball, but never had a chance as he was buried on a sack back around the 25-yard line. And there's still so you want to play football, right? Yeah, 
There's still some guys out there playing. That time it was Jordan Holly for Goshen. They're still coming hard at you. You get in the game sometimes and you don't realize how fast those guys can get in the backfield. New numbers continue to trickle in there for the Panthers. It'll be third down and very long, third down and 28. With the ball at the 28. And they'll hand the ball off. Here's an off tackle run to the left side, only out to about the 29 yard line. So, again, Snyder conservative play calling here in the late going with this 42 to 10 lead. And Trent Morgan, who was rough the last time he punted the football, back out there to punt it away again with under five minutes remaining. And over in that foray for Dwenger, I think the road's much tougher, Joe. I mean, you've got Leo now in the sectional championship. You're probably staring down at Plymouth and Lowell's, Lowell's out there probably in the semi-state. So, Morgan with a punt end over end, bounces at the 40. It's touched by Snyder at the 36. And it'll be first and 10. One of the Panthers was knocked down and looking at the official, Bryson Haft, on the... Uh, Punt coverage unit felt that uh, maybe that was not strictly speaking within the rules, but <laughs> look at you know, just staring at the official. Help me out here, yeah. yeah. Uh, the help was not to be coming, forthcoming. <laughs> well, it was interesting. I was reading some of the press during the week uh, from out of Goshen, and uh, they really felt they had a chance here tonight. And you'll remember last year, Joe uh, Snyder was sailing along, and then they ran up. Uh, they had a sectional championship. They had a regional championship. And then a team out of Laporte in the uh, semi-state. And really the feeling was Snyder was going to be able to handle that. Well, yeah. they got handled yeah. as the slicers sliced them up 35-7. to seven. And I think there was a little bit of a message. You know, when you get outside the SAC, yeah, you've had a tough year, tough conference, very physical. But guess what? All these teams, you've got to come ready to play. Absolutely. doesn't yeah. matter who you're playing. doesn't matter who it is. And I'm just going to be interesting how the playoffs, how, how the conference does in the playoffs. Because it was such a brutal conference this year to get through. Well, let, Lures, case in point, are they getting well? You know, Wazinski, I didn't hear whether he's back or available yeah. or how soon or when. But a lot of their success, I think, would be dependent on getting that young man back. Deadwire looking to hand the ball off. Stall, they ramp up on him and drop him. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe gets a yard to the Snyder 47. By the way, there was a penalty, so that moved the ball first and 10 to the 48 and they gain, gain a yard to the 40 well now to the 46. and yeah, you want to be playing your best football but you're right joe you want to be healthy got to have your, your your guys you got to have your guys and you got to you got to be playing your best football and you got to have your guys and it also helps if you can get a decent draw too well goshen would like to muster something in the final four minutes now we're inside of four minutes trying to finish the year pump fake again looking on the pump and go that's way too long well, you can't fault uh, Corbin Harrison laying out for that ball, but it was good to three yards past him. Six-foot senior playing his final game for the Redskins and just hoping for one more chance, one more catch. Yeah, he wants to make one more catch. So, And an update, Joe, in the fourth quarter, late in the fourth quarter, it's Concord now 28, Northside 13. So, so it looks like Snyder's going to get Concord next week. Um, we talked about Homestead beating Carroll, so Homestead's going to get Carmel. Bishop Lure is going to get Belmont next week, and Dwanger is going to get Leo. They'll run the ball stall in uh, second effort inside the 40, close to a first down at the 30. Had to get to about the 37. Looks like he's short by about a half a yard. You know, Winland is a team we want to take a look at, too. Big Absolutely. comeback and I mean, a big victory at home tonight they've, they've against Eastside. And they had that big comeback against Adams Central a couple weeks ago, too. So Woodland keeps tricking on. Could be a team of destiny. Could be, absolutely. It'll be fourth down and one. Clock is inside three and a half minutes now. Redskins huddling up, and they come up to the line of scrimmage. Let's see if Detweiler hands the ball off to Stoll, or they need a yard to keep uh, hopes alive here. And they will run Stoll, and he's got it as he cracks his way down to about the 36. Just needed a yard, he picked up two. Yeah, good push by Stahl that time. And 
you know, they're going to come up short on the scoreboard, obviously. But I, I tell you what, the future's bright next year yeah, for I Goshen. Agree. I if agree. They can have some size along that offensive and defensive line. And if they can retain a little bit of that size, Joe, I don't know how many of those kids are underclassmen on the offensive line. They've got some pieces coming back. They lose their uh, wideouts, a lot of them. But uh, Ramil Johnson will be back sure. and uh, with Clayton Detweiler. They get Stahl. back, uh, back, and also Jeff Stoll is back, so the running backs are back in their quarterback. First and 10, 245 remaining. Detweiler, high snap again, hands it off, and they'll run left side. Got a new running back in there now for the Redskins, so both teams going uh, liberally to their benches in the final series of this uh, tournament game. And how about Snyder responding to, you know, you know, putting that Dwanger loss behind them and getting going here in the playoffs. Yeah, I th thought they showed some real focus here tonight they right did. from the get-go. They were they ready running to play. out to that 21 to nothing lead. Yeah, they were definitely ready to play tonight, and we were kind of curious because we didn't think Southside was much of a test after the loss to Dwanger. We were curious how Snyder would be tonight, and I think they got a, an A, a grade. Empty backfield. A quick throw to the left side is incomplete. So Detweiler trying to come up with another first down. Clock is at two minutes, time remaining. Third down and eight. Trying to reach the Snyder just outside the 25 to about the 26 yard line. And again, they'll run Marlowe and bounces off a tackle, fights his way to the 30, got to the 29. And they'll have another fourth down call coming up, fourth down and about two. Yeah, we'll see if they put the ball in the air here, maybe a play action pass. So still working down, trying to get the last few points. Had a good turnout tonight too, you know, big turnout for Snyder and a pretty good turnout for Goshen. You know, a lot of them have left now. But Somebody, Joe, a lot of the folks didn't realize it was not a 7 o'clock kickoff, it was 7.30. Yeah. <laughs> So fourth down, and, and uh, by the way, closer to long two. And they'll run the ball again. There's some running room off to the right side, and Marlowe spinning and taking tacklers to the Snyder 20-yard line. Panthers may have had a chance to try to hit him. Cody Keller had a shot at him. But uh, instead, it'll be a new set of downs. Joe Auburn getting ready to check down on the field. We'll be uh, picking up his post-game interviews with couple of the Snyder players tonight. Detweiler has gone all the way tonight at quarterback. High snap again and runs Marlowe to the right side and takes a double hit right at the 20-yard line. They'll uh, spot the ball just inside the 20. We're inside of one minute, though. And the Redskins will have to hurry to get a couple of snaps off here before the end of this ball game. Nose of the football just inside the Panther 20-yard line. 42 to 10 is our score. Goshen has not scored the, since the second quarter when they got a touchdown and a 30-yard field goal. Trying to punch one in if they can in the late going. Now we're down to 26 seconds. Second down and nine. Detweiler from the right side. They run Marlowe again off tackle the left side. Brings it inside the 15. Still on his feet inside the 10. Gets down to the eight-yard line. The clock will stop with 15.5 seconds remaining. And it'll stop while they move the chains across the way. Now it runs again. They're still huddled up, and uh, looks like they're not going to be able to get a final snap off. We're down to five. We're down to four, and that is going to do it. It'll be Snyder advancing by this 42 to, ven 42 to 10 victory over the Goshen Redskins. So Snyder wins it and advancing, and they'll uh, take on Concord, the Minutemen, next uh, Friday night. We believe that game will be at Concord. So the team's getting ready to uh, exchange handshakes. Coach is coming out, and we'll be going down to Joe Walburn in the middle of the field here momentarily, as he'll be uh, looking to check in with some of the Snyder players.
waiting just for a moment while the teams that uh, form the line and they go down one side and the other and exchanging the congratulatory uh, handshakes for a game well played here tonight. Snyder uh, led 21-0 at the end of the first quarter. They built a lead out to 28 to nothing. David Scott had two of their first three touchdowns on the ground in the first quarter. Sandwiched down around a 24-yard Money Woods touchdown. And then Woods came back in the second quarter with a 28-yard score. Breaking tackles to make it 28 to nothing. But it would be Goshen getting into the end zone before the end of the first half on a seven-yard touchdown run by Dylan Back. Made it 28 to seven. And then 35 to seven, Money Woods from 29 yards before halftime. And it would be a three-yard, 30-yard field goal by Brinson that uh, took him to halftime in a 35-10 ball game. Only scores of the second half, an 18-yard touchdown run by Dominic Scott, the 27 remaining. And that's the way this game uh, will end in a 42-10 victory for the Snyder Panthers. Joe Walburn down on the field. And as soon as we get the uh, high sign from him that he's ready, let's check in with uh, Joe down there. Hey, Joe, I'm down here with Money Woods and Money. Wow, it seems like you guys were really physical tonight and really ran the football. Um, yeah, today, all through the week since we had a bye, we worked on, like, we worked on, like, playing with the ground wet or anything. And I knew today we were going to come out here and have to do what we had to do, so we came out here and played Snyder football. Um, obviously, was there any hangover from the loss to Dwanger? It seemed like you guys really wanted to get going tonight with the playoff football and make a statement. Yeah, well, we, we all mad about it, and <laughs> I, we really were. And we knew that we kind of needed it, too. Our heads were kind of hyped, and we took that as, like, a encouragement to get better. And all through that, we, we played hard, hit hard, and came out here to play. Have you played a game where you broken so many tackles down the field? Joe Parson and I were just, we couldn't get over your runs. You, you know, you ran out of the power eye. You know, you ran out of the spread. But it seemed like you broke so many tackles down the field. Um, no, I, I don't really, like see them or anything I just I kind of I always keep my um, eyes on the goal line and I just try to do anything I can to get there well congratulations tell your daddy that Joe Walburn said hello I was your daddy's quarterback in high school okay. so so congratulations Thank tonight you. and good luck in the playoffs Thank you. Dominique Dominique Scott the two-headed monster tonight money woods and Dominique Scott running downhill it seemed like you guys I was just talking to money Physical football tonight seemed like it was more traditional Snyder football. Talk to me about how hard you guys ran. Uh, we, you know, we dug our foot in the ground. We just kept it pushing. Uh, nobody who was in our way, we're going to keep going no matter what. Now, I love it, Joe. He's down here. He still has his helmet on. It's like you still want a few more carries. You know, the relationship with Money Woods, is it a competition? I mean, you guys stick together, yeah. but there's a competition for carries, and, and tonight you each had three touchdowns. No, sir, not at all. We love each other, man. That's my brother right there. And we want to keep going. We want to get down the state, you know. That ring is the ultimate goal for us. Yeah, and is that really what you guys, that's the focus now. You get over the Dwanger loss, but you have the playoffs in front of you, and really teams are remembered for what they do in the playoffs. So how important is it for you guys to make a long run? Oh, that's very important. You know, we want to get past that that loss right there. That that really hurt us. I feel like it made us better too, in a, in a great way. Uh, we want to we want to get better every day in practice and you know, hopefully get down there. Lastly, what's it mean to line up in that big power eye backfield? I mean, that's what Rod Woodson lined up in. That's what the great Courtney Davis lined up in. I mean, there's so much talent that count has come through Snyder over the years. And a lot of that talent has been in the backfield. So how cool is it to wear those black jerseys and to run the ball for Snyder? Oh, it's, it's very cool. We got a lot of tradition coming from back there. And, you know, me and Money just keep it going, really. Absolutely. Well, congratulations. Snyder kept it going tonight. So that's the two-headed monster, Joe. Two great running backs, and they make a nice combination. And they really didn't need a lot of the passing of steaming tonight to get the job done. So 
Big runs for Money Woods and Dominique Scott, and Snyder gets the job done and goes on against Concord. Great job, Joe Auburn down on the field with both Money Woods and Dominic Scott. And uh, remember, it was the passing game, though, the steepling to Bramley that really kind of got the, them maybe Goshen loosen up a little bit and got them rolling. And then three touchdown rushing touchdowns each for Money Woods and Dominic Scott here tonight. 42 to 10, the final score. We'll uh, head to the Walburn Financial Management postgame show. After this timeout, this is IHS Double Tournament Football on Fox Sports, 1250 The Ticket. I like things fast. That's why I like roller coasters, guitar solos, and race cars. That's also why I love Fios Internet from Frontier. Now with one year of Amazon Prime. I use blazing fast Fios Internet to get instant access to Amazon Prime movies and TV shows. Plus, I get unlimited photo storage, music, and Kindle books. And you can't beat free two-day shipping. Get Fios Internet from Frontier for $24.99 per month with qualifying phone service and one-year agreements on new internet service and get one year of Amazon Prime. Call 1-888-FRONTIER. Oh, yeah. Life in the fast lane. Get Fios Internet for $24.99 per month with 30 megabits per second upload and download speeds and get one year of Amazon Prime included. Call 1-888-FRONTIER. Limited time offer for qualifying services. Taxes, fees, and other restrictions apply. One year of Amazon Prime service included with one year agreement on new internet service. A maximum $100 early termination fee applies. Subject to availability. Filers marks owned by Verizon Trademark Services, LLC, and used under license. Hi, this is Russ Isaacs, former head football coach and athletic director at Snyder High School. I can tell you from personal experience that next to winning a championship, nothing compares to receiving a championship ring. The ring is a culmination of high achievement and adds tremendously to a student-athlete's self-esteem. Take it from the coach. Honor your achieving student-athlete with a championship ring from Signature Style Jewelry. Join the winner's circle. Get a free price quote and your artwork today. Call Todd Oliver at 800-273-8124, extension 3. That's 800-273-8124, extension 3. Write it down, 800-273-8124, extension 3. Or email him at Todd at SignatureStyleJewelry.com. That's Todd at at SignatureStyleJewelry.com. Signature Style Jewelry, the leading online retailer of championship rings, class rings, and fashion jewelry. Behind the scenes of the making of a great play area. I'm envisioning something really spectacular, something over the top. Let's draw up some plans. Yes, JP. Right away, JP. Excellent idea. Bold move, JP. We'll get right on it. I see a large fort with a giant cannon to slide down. Let's make it historic. Tie it in with the history of Fort Wayne. And we gotta have it soft so kids of all ages can play. Let's have those blueprints on my desk by Monday morning. Jefferson Point and Lutheran Children's Hospital ER presents Fort Wayne's largest indoor soft play area. Parents can relax while the kids explore a fort, slide down a cannon, and crawl through the 16-foot cherry blossom tree. Over 2,000 square feet of indoor play area. The largest retail play area in the state of Indiana. Bring the kids and enjoy the fun at Jefferson Point. For details, go to jeffersonshopping.com. There's so much to see. It's where you want to be. Jefferson Point. Jefferson Point. Jefferson Point. You're listening to the High School Football Game of the Week on WGL Fort Wayne, Fox Sports 1250, The Ticket. Welcome back, everybody. It's Fuller Stadium with Joe Auburn. I'm Joe Parson. 42-10 the final. Let's take a look quickly at the line score of the ball game. And Snyder jumping on top of the visiting Goshen Redskins, 21-0 in the first quarter. And uh, they had a Money Woods touchdown that was sandwiched Around uh, two Den Dominic Scott uh, touchdown runs, Joe Auburn, to make it 21-0 at the end of that first quarter. And then our play of the game would uh, occur on, early on in uh, the second quarter. It was a Money Woods touchdown run that uh, breaks tackles. He got into the end zone on a t touchdown run that, quite frankly, I didn't think uh, he was going to get into the end zone, and it sounded like this. So you look to Money Woods again, off tackle to the right, and stepping, cuts it outside, stripping uh, tacklers, and finally knocked down inside the... No, he's still on his feet inside the 20. Oh, he's oh, going to score! Wow, he would not go down. That will be a 28-yard touchdown run by Money Woods. I thought he was down, Joe, at inside the 15 at about the 10, but Money thought otherwise. 
Joe Auburn, I, I think maybe that really embodied what this Snyder running attack was all about here tonight. They came in focused, ready to execute, and they got the job done. Absolutely, and they played physical. And we were wondering how Snyder would be. You know, still, it's, it's been three weeks, but still, would that Dwanger loss linger? No, it's gone. They're ready for playoff football. They kick off the bus tonight, and they were ready to play, and they ran the football down Goshen's throat. Only seven points scored by the two teams in the second half, and the Panthers got that one on a, another Money Woods touchdown run, 29-yarder uh, to make it 35-7, to seven, and uh, nobody scored in the fourth quarter. So it's on to week two in the 5A sectionals, and it'll be Snyder on the road at Concord next Friday night. They'll take a 9-1 and one record with them in Fort Goshen. They bow out at 5-5, five and five, but, you know, Kyle Park, I think, has got to be satisfied. This was a winless team a year ago. They get five wins this year. They end the year at 5-5. Five and five. Yeah, a great step up from last year. Last year they were playing sophomores. Now they had juniors this year, and they won five games. And I think, you know, remember Goshen. I think Goshen could be a team that we could really look towards next year to maybe making some noise, Joe. Well, where will we be next Friday night? We don't know. We'll see how things have cleared out uh, with uh, who won and who lost and where we can go, and we'll let you know via the uh, Fox Sports uh, promos during the week. But we'll be somewhere. And... Uh, Looking forward to more uh, tournament football next Friday night somewhere. Oh, it's so much fun. There's so much passion and enthusiasm, and Snyder had that tonight. Appreciate you having with us, and uh, good, good outing for the Snyder Panthers. They look like they're ready to make a long run. That remains to be seen. They'll take on a very good Concord Minutemen team next week, and that one at Concord. Here tonight, though, the Panthers with a win over visiting Goshen 42 to 10. Special thanks to our studio producer. His name was Patrick the Prince Plumber. Until Friday night next week somewhere, I'm Joe Parson. So long, everybody, and thanks so very much for listening. Every small business person has the same dread, taxes, reports, and bookkeeping. What are you to do? You know you can't afford the big guys to keep you legal and solvent? Well, now there's Wallburn Financial Management to save the day. Here's their number. You're going to want to remember this one, 260-459-2240. That's 459-2240. Why? Well, Wallburn Financial Management specializes in the little guy. With reasonable rates and sensible retainers, Wallburn Financial Management simply perfect for the small business budget. The game just isn't the game without you. When pain or injury has you sidelined, call Parkview Sports Medicine at 260-266-4007. Whether you're an aspiring pro or a recreational athlete, our team of certified orthopedic surgeons, physical therapists, athletic trainers, and registered dietitian nutritionists will provide you with rapid access to comprehensive care and sports-specific rehabilitation. We can get you back to the action quickly and safely. Just call 260-266-4007. Parkview Sports Medicine, your dream team. The market goes up, the market goes down. And if you're a typical investor, you may be playing games, trying to guess correctly. When to buy, when to sell. That can be expensive and exhausting. Well, what if there was a local company with tons of investment experience to help you take some of the guesswork and worry out of investing? The name is Stiefel, specializing in individual portfolio management. Stiefel can help reduce the risk and worry of investing, building you a portfolio of quality, performing stocks and bonds. Give Stiefel a call at 260-459-3989. You've heard the saying, it's all about the Benjamins. Nothing could be more true at Tom Steele Tire, where it's all about saving you money. For over 35 years, this family-owned business has been saving Fort Wayne drivers lots of Benjamins. Offering quality tires and ASC certified mechanical service for your car. And that includes an oil change and tire rotation special, all for just $24.95. Two convenient locations in Fort Wayne to serve you. Tom Steele Tire, not just a tire store, but a complete automotive center. Next time you're downtown and needing to feed your sweet tooth, you're just a few steps away from Rudy's. Fort Wayne's perfect location for stocking up on those famous to brands gourmet chocolates the Summit City is famous for. Rudy's is located just catty corner from the main entrance to Parkview Field. In fact, Rudy's is a great place to meet up with friends before an event at the ballpark. There's even outside patio seating, ideal for relaxing after work. With a wide assortment of adult beverages and aromas to choose from as well, Rudy's, distinctly different in downtown Fort Wayne. Sold. That's the word you expect to hear when selling a home. And Rick Whitman from Century 21 Bradley can give you and your family the advice, expertise, and satisfaction to fit your needs when buying or selling a home. With Rick Whitman's nearly 40 years of can-do experience, you'll find an effective method to accomplish your goals. 
select the proper loan, and feel the comfort of your new home. When you think real estate, think Rick Whitman at Century 21 Bradley. Call 260-704-6565. Be sure to ask for Rick. You're a super fan who will tailgate anywhere. The pros? Check. College? Check. Your eight-year-old peewee game? Big time. And to prepare for this ritual, you head to Meyer for freshly prepared food and licensed team apparel. Proudly display allegiance to your favorite team with our licensed short and long sleeve tees, hoodies, hats, and jerseys. Plus, load up on fresh meats, snacks, and drinks. So don't just tailgate, tail greater at Meyer. Brought to you by Meyer. Meyer is proud to support IHSAA football. Miss a great high school game recently? Or simply want to revisit that game-changing electric play that turned everything all around? Well, now there's a great new opportunity to do just that. Catch all the exciting action of our live radio broadcast simply by visiting SummitCitySports.com after our game broadcast. Plus, many other high school sports highlights to choose from as well. It's all new and available now at SummitCitySports.com. You've been listening to IHS AA Football, presented by Parkview Sports Medicine, a winning combination with the IHS AA, and by Fox Sports 1250, The Ticket. Proud sponsors of tonight's game also include Meyer, proud supporters of youth sports, Mumper Insulation, with over 40 years of quality professional insulation, Walburn Financial Management, providing affordable solutions to bookkeeping and tax problems, Midwest America Credit Union, all together better. Signature style rings, enhance the self-esteem of your student athlete. Jefferson Point, shopping with a special point of view. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Air and chiropractic, specializing in spinal health. Stiefel, a firm of choice. Tom Steel Tire Service, building trust with customers for over 30 years and with special promotional consideration by the Fort Wayne Journal-Gazette. Nobody delivers the goods each morning like the Journal-Gazette.